hang on, hang on. I didn't press the button to get rid of that, so <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. I've been only been doing it, what, a year and a half? So anyway, what can you do? Guys, welcome along to Falls from Iron. Um, as you know, usual, a little bit of housekeeping. Let's get this out of the way. Please don't forget to like, comment on and share the stream. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and hit that bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support. Just thought I'd do another episode of Talk West Ham. I was sitting here doing nothing much in particular and I thought, ah, I'm getting a bit bored, so... I'll tell you what I'll do. There's plenty to talk about. Let's be honest about it. If you want to talk about Europa Conference League and, and the teams that we're going to be facing and, and the draws and, and the process and all the rest of it, get your comments in the comment section. We'll have a little chat. If there's any any stories you want to talk about specifically, if you want to talk about Stuart Pierce moving on, um, if you want to talk about Kurt Zuma getting before the beak and pleading guilty, as it turns out, um, or, um, and this is a story that broke fairly recently. Um, I don't know if any of you have access to the One Football website or the One Football app. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to share with you the, the wonder of technology. Uh, I'm just going to press a few buttons because some of you might not be aware of this, but there's this story here. West Ham are ready to consider a release clause in the new Declan Rice con. Tracked. Now, this is according to 90 Minutes, and this story broke about half hour ago, maybe an hour top whack, and it says that West Ham are ready to soften their, their stance over including a release clause in any contract, any new contract offered to Declan Rice. The 23-year-old is a long-term transfer target for Manchester City, Manchester United, and Chelsea, and has reportedly been linked with a move away from London Stadium, Rice has shunned new contract offers put forward to him by West Ham over the last 12 months, as he is understandably keen to evaluate his options. But the Hammers are reluctant to cash in on their soon-to-be club captain and instead wish to build a team around him that is capable of regularly challenging for a top four finish and Champions League football. Two years remain on Rice's current contract with the option of an additional year, yet West Ham recognised that the deal he signed back in 2019 no longer represents his standing at the club or in the game. Indeed, the England international could likely command wages approaching ooh, quarter of a million pounds a week were he to move on, though he has always stated that any future move would be geared around an ambition to win trophies rather than money. Okay, let me get rid of that. So, yeah, I I, I think that release clauses are fairly commonplace in contracts now of, of top, top players. And I would argue that Declan Rice is a top, top player. He is our top player. Um, So I think that it's one of those things that, David Sullivan, David Gold, Karen Brady, and uh, Mr. Kratinsky, Daniel Kratinsky, might not, their default position might not be to put release clauses into contracts. But when you've got an exceptional talent such as Declan Rice and obviously what he brings to the table for West Ham United, sometimes I think you have to be the reed that bends with the wind. Do you know what I mean? So... I've got no problem. I mean, if there's a release clause that's put in a contract that's put under his nose, I personally don't have a problem with putting a release clause in it, providing the release clause is triggered at a reasonable amount. I mean, it's no good if you put a release clause in that says, oh, he can go for, you know, 20 quid and a, a bag of Freddos or something like that. You've got to be realistic. So I think if if it put if there was a release clause that put put in there that said that, say the release clause was 120 million. I'm just plucking a figure out of the air. I don't know if that's what the, the release clause is going to be. But let's just say for the sake of a conversation, and you might have a different figure in your head. It might be slightly more, it might be slightly less. Let's say 120 million quid is the release clause. And let's say that Declan Rice signs the contract this summer and then he goes to the World Cup in Qatar later this year, tears it up, comes back, and he has a season like he's had this season and maybe a little bit more besides. I don't think that's unreasonable to expect that obviously a little bit more experience playing in Europe this season, playing for England, he will get better. 
So he comes to the, this time next year and a club comes in, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Manchester City, I don't know, and says 120 million quid. Fine. I've got no problem with that. Oh, if if that's what the going rate is, if that's the fee that's been agreed, the release clause that's been agreed, personally, I've got no problem with it. As I say, most of the top players now, it's commonplace that they will have a release clause woven in there somewhere, somehow. And if it's all pre-agreed, then everybody knows where they stand. So, OK, let's go to the comments section. Let's have a look and see who's here. Andy's there. Hello, mate. Hope you are well. And Charlie, he's he's uh, you're, you're back, mate. You're back. He's uh, he he keeps coming. Back. He was he was there yesterday on the the match review. If if any of you haven't seen the match review yet, go and have a look. Charlie was in it. He was he was in the in the away section at the uh, the Amex Stadium on Sunday. One of those in it. What can you do? Um, Doug, hope you are well, my friend. Uh, getting getting nearer to your your big day, isn't it, mate? And yes, that's another thing that we can discuss, guys. If you want to get stuck into that, as I say, this is a completely off the cuff thing. I don't have a script. If you guys want to talk about something completely different, that's fine. Jared Bowen obviously has got his call up to the England squad today, and and well deserved. I got to say, Doug, I know obviously you're you're a Liverpool fan. I'd be interested to know what you think, actually, as a, as an outsider looking in. And you say you're delighted for Jared Bowen. Do you do you think that he? There was no way that Gareth Southgate could, couldn't call him up, in my opinion. I mean, just looking here on the Premier League website, 36 appearances in the Premier League this season, 12 goals, 10 assists. That's that's phenomenal stats, you know. Especially when you consider I'm not being funny. He's he's not playing with the the, the caliber of players that say, well, your team, for example, Doug, Liverpool, um, Manchester City, you know, he's playing with a with a slightly lesser calibre of players. And I'm not doing down, but there, there's a world of difference between, with all due respect, Pablo Fornells and Kevin De Bruyne, for example, or Pablo Fornells and Sadio Mane. So, Jared Bowen, I, I think that he... If he didn't get called up, I would be seriously asking the question, what more does he need to do? What are you looking for, Mr. Southgate? Um, should be our top earner based on the squad status, so I'd give him 150k a week. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I think that your best player should be your... Well, let me put it this way. Your best player and possibly your captain. But then sometimes your best player is your captain. Not always, but sometimes. So I would say that your best player and your captain should be the two highest earners. I don't think that that's something that's out of line. And a hundred again, 150k to, to mere mortals like me, that is an absolute fortune. But to a Premier League player, 150k, and I'm talking the top, the elite end Premier League players like your De Bruyne's, like your Mo Salah's, 150k a week is actually fairly modest, if I'm being honest. And I I don't think that Declan Rice, obviously him being a more a defensive player, if you will, he's not like an offensive player like a Mo Salah or Kevin De Bruyne. But I do think that he is, I, I, I'll say it, I think he's world-class. I, I, I think he now has to be considered world-class. I said a couple of years ago that I thought he had, had to add goals to his game for him to be elevated to that section. And whilst he's got a few goals this season, possibly, I don't think that he's got possibly the amount of goals that maybe I would have said a year ago would have made me think that he is, would elevate him to the world-class status, if that makes sense. But I do think that the, that the performances he's put in this season and the calibre of opponents he's put, played big games in Europe, obviously as well for England, I think he is now world class. That's just my opinion. Other of you might disagree. Um, but 150k a week, yeah, fine. And Charlie says they're totally fine with a release clause that doesn't get somewhere north of a hundred million. As I say, that's not not too far from where I was said earlier. I said 120 mil. So I think if if it's north of a hundred million, I think you've got to consider it. I think if and I said this on a chat earlier, you're you're in it, Charlie. You might have seen the comment. I think if it was 120 million, I think we have to give it due consideration. I think it's 150 million, then it's at that point, and I'm talking right now, in a year I might have a slightly different perspective on things. 
But at the minute, I think 120 million is where I would be. Mm, I'm now I'm starting to be tempted. 150, mate, you can't turn that down. You seriously can't. Um, just quickly whizzing through da, 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 da. West Ham online, Hammerhead. Hope you are well, and Joan as well. Um, Andy, if you set a release clause and you're not happy with it, you shouldn't negotiate it in the first place. 100%. 100%. I mean, possibly it may well be, like I say, that Moyes and Sullivan and Gold and Brady and Kratinsky, maybe by default, they don't want a release clause in any player's contract. But in the year 2022 with the Premier League and Europa League competitions and Champions League competitions and, and all the other bits and pieces, your top players have it. That's just the nature of the beast. I mean, if you go back sort of, I don't know, 50 years or so, players didn't have agents. Now, every player has an agent. Even a player down in League Two has an agent. So things change. And what's true one day isn't true the next. Release clauses are something that top players have in their contracts. And if a club if a club doesn't agree to a release clause, then the player generally will just turn around and say, okay, fine, I'll just let my current contract wind down and I will go and I will go for free. And when I go for free, I will negotiate a release clause in that contract. So they'll get it eventually. So I think you kind of have to swallow on this one. Um, looks we are adding a release clause in Rice's contract. Yep, exactly what we was just talking about that's that's the story i i suspect that it as i say it's one of those things i think it it has to happen bowen for england and alfie i've got to be honest with you as i said earlier mate if if gal southgate doesn't pick jared bowen on the basis of 36 appearances in the premier league 12 goals and 10 assists i really don't know what he's looking for i i really don't um, and I, if I was Jared Bowen, I'd probably be turning around, or if I was connected to Jared Bowen, I'd probably turn around and say, do you got any Welsh ancestry, any Irish, any Scottish, any anything, just because you're probably not going to, if you've had the season of your life like you've had, absolutely flying, banging in goals in the Premier League, getting assists, banging in goals in the Europa League, getting assists, man of the match performances left, right and centre, and everyone is clamouring for you to get in, even not West Ham fans, are clamouring for you to get in the England team and you don't. Like I say, I'm not entirely sure what what he would be looking for. But as Andy says there, Southgate said he was in consideration for March, but obviously he got the injury against Liverpool, didn't he, at Anfield? And yeah, I mean, it's one of those, but we'll see what happens. Over the move for Jared Bowen, would have been in the last squad if he wasn't injured, so well-deserved. Hopefully gets a decent amount of game time and gets the chance to state a claim for Qatar. I would love him to be on the plane to Qatar. The only thing that always worries me, and again, Charlie and Andy, and you're in the group, the Hammers Chat group chat, someone mentioned it, and it might even been one of you two, said something about hope that it's not, and I'm saying this touching wood, hope it's not another Dean Ashton where he goes away and gets a bad injury and is never the same player again, or that he gets his head turned. But the thing is, guys, that the, the, the latter situation anyway, the, the head being turned because obviously he's now, if he goes to England, he'll be talking to players that are playing at Arsenal, at Tottenham, at Chelsea, at Liverpool, at Manchester United and at Manchester City. And he'll start having conversation with them. We know it goes on. And sometimes you sort of like your ears prick up, your head turns and you're like, you're on how much? Your facilities are like what? And it can start to make players a little bit envious and think, hmm, is the grass a little bit greener on the other side? But again, it, it's something you can't stop. We, If we want to have players, we, we do want to have players that are getting international recognition because that then means that they're operating at a certain level. But then when they go away and they play for those countries, the flip side of that coin is that they are going to talk to players at those top six clubs. They are going to start to compare notes and possibly... It may well be that they they start to get itchy feet, but it, it, it is what it is. Um, Mix come in, says, random, but if Moyes ever left us, I would love Jose as manager. I've just seen his BT interview and he's class. Do you mean Jose Mourinho? I'm, I'm guessing you must be talking about Jose Mourinho. Um, 
I th- uh, listen, Jose Mourinho, fantastic manager, obviously won the European Cup in 2004. I remember when Porto went to Old Trafford and this was a Jose Mourinho that was just starting to make some waves in European football. He'd won the Europe, the what was then the UEFA Cup actually against Celtic the year before in 03, um, beat them 3-2, I think it was. Then they won the the European Cup the following year and they beat Manchester United on the way. He then went to Chelsea, won two Premier Leagues in succession, yada, yada, yada. Um, You can't look at his CV and say, if you're talking about Jose Mourinho and go, he's a shit manager. Um, Whether he's the manager he was once upon a time, not entirely sure. But he he is a quality manager. Whether he would be right for West Ham and whether West Ham would be right for him, I'm not entirely convinced. I have to be honest, but class, a a, a quality manager, quality, quality manager. Um, He still picked Fathead Maguire. Yeah, he, now this is the thing. I've got to be honest with you, Andy. I often hear the line that was trotted out by many, many England managers. I don't pick on form. I pick, sorry, I don't pick on reputation. I pick on form. And then they pick a player and you're left sitting there going, how did they get in the squad? I mean, do you remember, um, was it the beginning of this season? Jesse Lingard got picked. Now, obviously, Jesse Lingard had a loan spell season before last now with us and did fantastically well. And I would welcome Jesse Lingard into the squad for next season. No problem at all. But he got into an England squad at the beginning of what is now last season. And I think he got into it on the basis of eight minutes for his club team which I found quite astonishing. So you're sitting there and going, well, clearly you haven't picked him on form. You have to have picked him on your past relationship with this guy. And there's a lot of players that are like that. I mean, Jordan Pickford has had times where you've looked and gone, there's absolutely no way that on current form, he's one of the top three English goalkeepers, but he's got in there and it's because of their past relationship. So it it does happen. Uh, does Maguire deserve the place on merit on on form? No, I would say he doesn't. In fact, I would. I'm I'm going to say it. I, I think that if we're being completely honest about it, if it was on the basis of form, I would put Dawson in ahead of Maguire. Now, some people might think that that's completely a ridiculous statement, and it possibly is. It possibly is. But I repeat. On the basis of the form that both of those players have shown over the last month or two, which one of those two players would you have in the England squad? Would you have Craig Dawson or Harry Maguire? Let me know. I would have Craig Dawson, but that's just me. Um, Joan, I'm pleased for Bowen, but I don't really want our players playing yet more games. Bar humbug. Uh, that's a fair point, Joan. I mean, it, yes, you're right. It's It's more games, but that's the price of success. One of the things that is a little bit of a bugbear in mine is these managers, and they're fantastic managers, don't get me wrong, the likes of Guardiola, Klopp um, being a prime example, where they moan about the fixture congestion. Usually around Christmas, usually around Easter, they sit there moaning about it. And it really bugs me because it's like, well, hang on a minute, you knew what the calendar was like before you came to this country, before you signed on the contract, before you started taking the money and the plaudits and all the rest of it, you knew exactly what the calendar was like. Now you've come here and you're moaning about it. Why do you think you're getting paid a king's ransom to do your job? Why do you think you've got all of the sports scientists and the medical department and this, that and the other? Why do you think you've got these squads that have got 25, 30 players, all of whom are international players that have been brought in for an awful lot of money. And you're sitting there moaning about the fixtures. You knew what the score was when you walked in the door. I don't understand. It's like someone buying a house next door to the Heathrow Airport and then they sit there and moan about the noise. It's like, are you for real? Um, Mick, great experience for Bowen, well-deserved. Yes, absolutely. Can we talk about some signings? If you want, as I say, this is this is a little stream that I'm just doing because I just want to have a little bit of interaction with you guys. So if you want to talk about some signings, put some, put some names in the chat. Um, I've got the OneFootball website looking at me and 
there's a lot of rumours doing the rounds. I mean, Gonzo did his morning video about Naya Fagird, who's a centre-back, left-sided centre-back from Ren or Stad Rene to give him their, their full and correct title. And yeah, I mean, is, is he going to be someone that's going to kick Zuma out of the, the, the starting lineup? No, I think he's going to be someone that partners Zuma. Um, would I have him in ahead of Craig Dawson, who I've just mentioned? Mm, arguable. Would I have him in ahead of Ogbonna? Well, the problem with Ogbonna is you don't know what version of Ogbonna is going to come back after the injury. Um, I think that that probably means, though, if this guy comes through the door, I think that probably means that Issa Diop's off very, very likely, unless Ogbonna's injury is possibly more serious than we've been led to believe. But we'll see. Um, Rice te technically doesn't have an agent. When you say technically, I was led to believe, and I could be wrong, isn't his agent his dad? I might have that wrong. Um, all players have agents, though, don't they? And I would have thought that Declan Rice has... I'm fairly sure Declan Rice has got an agent. So when you say technically, what do you mean technically? He either has one or he doesn't. Anyway, uh, we'll have to see how Moyes spends the dosh this summer. If it's a shambles, it's irrelevant what the release clause is. That is true. And I, I listen, we've spoke about transfer windows and all the rest of it to death. I do, though, look at the that little stat that was put out about the starting 11s, the, the least amount of changes in the Premier League. We had the least amount of changes. And I, and I do think that towards the end of the season, we did start to run out of gas. The fixtures just start were coming, you know, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. And I just think it was too much. I just think it was too much in the end. We just ran out of gas. Still a fantastic season. Don't misunderstand me. Um, but yeah, I'll be very interested to see who Moyes brings in in the summer. Charlie says, Bowen and Rice getting in the England squad shows prospective transfer targets that West Ham can be good for an England career. Not like the old days where West Ham players were consistently overlooked. Yeah, I, I get that, Charlie. And long may that continue. I, I think that we've had a long time up to the point that Rice was getting caps where we had players that you looked at and thought they should be getting picked. They should be getting a call up. I mean, prime example, obviously being Mark Noble in the 15, 16 season. I mean, how he never got called up, even for a friendly, even for a friendly in the run up to the Euros that happened that year and nothing didn't get a call up. Just ridiculous. But, yeah, I mean, we're obviously in a different place now. We're obviously qualifying for European competition in successive seasons via league placing for the first time in our history. Monumental achievement. And hopefully we can get in players that will improve. The one thing I did hear this morning, Calvin Phillips has obviously been linked with us quite extensively over the last couple of months. I heard a story linking him with Man City. Now, let's be completely honest. If it's a choice that Calvin Phillips has got between staying at Leeds, going to Manchester City or coming to West Ham United, I think we're probably not going to be his favoured option. But we'll wait and see. Um, Southgate's still not the right man for the England job, if you ask me. Well, listen, Hammerhead, that is an opinion. You're entitled to it. What I would counter with is that this is a guy that, and I can pick holes in Southgate. Trust me, I can, I can pick holes in Gareth Southgate. But let's be completely honest. World Cup semi-finalists, European Championship runners-up. And if you want to throw in and if you want to count it, just for sort of a little bit of extra filling, he also got third place in the Nations League. Now, I think he could legitimately point to that and go, well, OK, outside of Alf Ramsey in the history of England managers who's got that volume of achievements that they can point to, um, there isn't anyone else. There isn't anyone else. I mean, the, o the only other person to get England to a final was Sir Alf Ramsey. The only other people to get England to a semi-final were obviously Alf Ramsey, obviously Terry Venables and Bobby Robson. So, yeah, I listen. Do I think he's he's the perfect man for the job? No, I don't. Do, can I think of 
people that could possibly go in there and do better? Possibly, but would they go realistically? You're not. I mean, ideally, I'd love to see Pep in the job. Pep, Pep would be a, a fantastic manager, I think. But is he is he cut out for international management? Does he want to do international management? Would he manage England? And would he do it for the for the money that the FA would want to pay? Possibly not. He's probably the right fit. All things considered, he is the right fit for now. And as I say, you can't really look at his achievements and say that he hasn't had, he ha hasn't been a success of, of one shape, way, shape or form. Um, good evening, Mark. Hope you are well. Um, I'm just going to go through it because I'm rabbiting on, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, Peter, that twat on Talk Bollocks says Bowen has to move to improve as staying at a mid-table team could ruin his international chances. Right. That twat. Well, there's a few twats on Talk Bollocks. Are you talking? Is it Jamie O'Hara we're talking about? Because uh, that wouldn't surprise me. A mid-table team. Hmm. A team that's finished, what, sixth and seventh in successive seasons is that mid-table. See, I thought mid-table would be somewhere eighth to twelfth. Eight, eighth to twelfth would be what I would consider mid-table. Above eighth, and you're you're an upper-tier team. And below twelfth, you're a lower-tier team. Eight to twelve, that's mid-table, in my view. I could be. You guys might have a different view on it. But I would say eighth to twelfth, that is mid-table. Well... We haven't finished there in the last tw two seasons, so we're not a mid-table team. So whichever twat that was, Peter, they're a twat. Um, I like mixed thinking, says Hammerhead. Hope I'm wrong, but I think more Moyes couldn't take us much further. Right now, OK. I, could he Could he have taken us further? Well, maybe. But realistically, Hammerhead, who could West Ham attract realistically? I mean, you could sit there and you could say Pep Guardiola. You could say Jurgen Klopp. They're not coming. They're not coming. Who realistically could West Ham attract? Who realistically could West Ham afford that could do better than David Moyes is doing right now with the tools he's got to operate with? I can think of only two managers operating right now in the Premier League who, if David Moyes was sacked tomorrow and these two, one of these two guys were put in, in his place, that I'd actually go... OK, that makes sense. And they're Brendan Rodgers and Graham Potter. Aside from them, I don't really see anyone else that's a better fit. That's just my opinion on it. So, um, Charlie, hope you're well, my friend. Uh, I like Jose, to be fair, but personally, I want a more attacking manager than Moyes. Yeah, that is one thing. I mean, he does often have the tag of a fairly defensive minded manager, rightly or wrongly. And I do think that we remember the West Ham fans didn't take to Sam Allardyce. Now, I know that you could say, well, yeah, Jose's a couple of rungs above Sam Allardyce, and, and you're absolutely right. But you know what I'm saying? Stylistically, he's not that far removed from him. He's, he's better a manager than Sam Allardyce. Don't misunderstand me. But in terms of being a safety first pragmatist type of manager, they're very, very similar in that regard. And I don't think that that would be something that would go down well with the West Ham fans. Uh, in the same way, it didn't go down well with the Manchester United fans. Manchester United expect, and Tottenham fans as well. Manchester United fans, Tottenham fans expect a certain brand of football similar to what West Ham expect. They didn't get it, and he was out. So I would think the same thing. Forrest Gump will always be picked by Southgate. Fair enough. Luke, hope you are well. Um, Hammer said there are about 10 cent halves younger and better than Slabhead. Yeah, they didn't play in the Premier League, but definitely better than Maguire. I'm better than Maguire, mate. Uh, Pickford would be better off moving furniture. That's harsh, Peter, but probably true. Ward Prowse says, Joan, kept Southampton safe. They were fifth in set piece goals. I think we were sixth. Set priest goals towards the end of the season seem to dry up. I don't know if I, I haven't looked at the stats, but the set pieces seem to go a little bit wrong towards the end of the season from where I was sitting. But um, like it or not, Maguire is one of England's best centre backs, which shows how poor we are there. That is true. That is true. Um, it's a bit like the other day where Pablo Fornells was having a crap game. And like I say, I love Pablo Fornells, but. He was having a shocker and he's had shockers for a little while now. Let's be completely honest about it. 
and David Moyes doesn't hook him until nine minutes from the end of the match. And it's probably because he's looking at the bench and thinking, well, I don't really fancy that. But I blame him for that because he's had five transfer windows. But there you go. Ballon Dawson over Maguire any day. I'm glad you agree, my friend. Um, Mark says, I guess squad harmony and relationships will always be factors in international squads. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Do excuse me. I just need a slurp of my tea. <laughs> Tetley tea. Can't be bad. Actually, it was probably as the zone, but whatever. Um, Peter, National League is another waste of time and risks getting players injured when they should be rested. Do you know, the Nations League, it's funny because I thought that the purpose of that was to get rid of the pointless friendlies, but we're still having pointless friendlies. So it's like, so what is the point of the this Nations League bollocks? I mean, it, it just sort of seems to get in the way. It's, it's just money. It's the same as everything. Everything comes down to money. You know, why do things happen? Because of money. Why do things not happen? Because of money. Money makes the world go round. Money talks and bullshit walks. Joan, Hammerhead Maguire has been dreadful this season and shouldn't get into the England squad. Yeah, he shouldn't, but he gets in because he's a mate of Gareth Southgate. Uh, Dawson for England is never happening due to his age. Yep, that's true. That it is probably is down to that in part. Uh, it might be controversial as well, but let's be honest, he's also not good enough. Well, his skill set, yeah, I, I'll give you that. Does Maguire have... Um, more tools in his toolbox than Dawson. Yes, he does. But I would suggest that, like I say, I'm talking in terms of their form in the last month or two. Would you say that Dawson should be in ahead of Maguire? I personally think he should. Is Maguire a better player overall? I would say yes, he is, if I'm being brutally honest. He's younger. He's had more experience playing at a higher level. He's you know, he's, he's got more tools to, to bring to bear. But I think that if you're looking at what they've brought to the table in the last month or two, for me, no contest. Dawson, all day long and twice on Sunday. Um, that would be another Matt Upton situation waiting to happen, possibly. But until he's given a cap for England, which won't happen. I think if Matt Dawson... Uh, Matt Dawson? Craig Dawson. Matt Dawson's the rugby player. If Craig Dawson gets an England cap, I think the hole up my ass will heal. Controversial, but there you go. Uh, I don't think you can pick solely from on form for internationals. Two players in form, completely different styles of play. You can't just combine them and expect it to work, in my opinion. For example, Gerard and Lampard. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, but I think you... You do, if form has to be part of it, I mean, you can't put a player that's bang out of form in an England team. That's just my opinion. You have to be doing it for your club team to get the call up. That's just the way I look at it. Now, I know that's not the way it happens in real life, if your face fits, but um, one person I did feel sorry in that situation, though, with Gerard and Lampard was Paul Scholes because it was like, OK, we'll have Gerard and Lampard in, in the centre and well, we'll stick Paul Scholes over there. And, mate, that that player should have had the team built, built around him. Simple as that. Um, Luke, managers get asked questions and the soundbite gets reported. I'm sure Klopp quantified his rant. <laughs> Yeah, but like I say, Luke, if you're talking about what I said earlier about managers signing a contract and then moaning about the, the fixture congestion, no, I just, I just, I don't like it. They, they moan, they want a, a Christmas break and they want this and they want that. Like I say, you knew what the rules of engagement were when you signed the contract, when you walked through the door and you're moaning about it. Like I say, and these, these are the managers of the top teams that have the bigger squads. If anyone should be moaning, it should be the teams down the bottom. And you generally find that that doesn't happen. Eamon, problem is some players' bad form is still better than other players' good form because some players are on different level to others. Form is temporary, class is permanent. One way of looking at it, and I do agree with the the, the last sign-off of form is temporary, class is permanent. There, you, you do get players that go through bad spells, but you, you, your club... Your club form is your bread and butter, isn't it? Um, yes, Rice's agent is his dad. Well, then he's got an agent then. He's got an agent. 
uh, whether it's his his blood relative or whether it's not. Um, and Luke's dad is also his agent. So they got so Luke, you've got something in common with Declan Rice. <laughs> Um, Mark, probably just me, but would anyone else like to see Dawson leave now? Leaving on great terms and nothing but great memories. I've heard a whisper, and I don't know if I should say this, but fuck it. I've heard he could be on his way. Uh, something to do with him possibly wanting to go back to the north, be close to his family and, and other things like that. Now... If it's a if it's a situation where let, let's just say for argument's sake his marriage is potentially at stake. Listen, I'm a family man. I would say, Craig, you've been a fantastic servant for the club. You've been a great value signing. You've given everything for the cause, and just just worn your heart on your sleeve. Absolutely brilliant. Don't want to lose you, but in that set of circumstances, we completely understand. And you go with our blessing. If there, if it's anything outside of that, I would try as much as possible to keep him. Maybe not as, I, possibly not as our main starting centre back, but certainly our backup, our first backup. Um, I would, I want to keep him. I would want to keep him. But as I say, I've heard a whisper that he wants to go back north because of family issues. And if that's the case, I wish him well. I don't want, and I don't think he would, but we all know what happened with Payet, and I won't go into too much. As I've said before, if he'd have turned around and said, listen, he misses his pissed off back to France with the kids. I'm I'm stuck here in London. My family have all left me. I'm absolutely heartbroken, and I've, I've, I've got to go. I don't want to, but I've got to go back to Marseille. There wouldn't have been a single West Ham fan that would have thought bad of him. But obviously, we know what happened. Um, Charlie, uh, agreeing with Charlie, he says there has to be a big element of form. But there's other things that come into it, i.e. style of play, age, longevity, as well as form in an international basis, which helps um, helps HM a lot. HM. I'm probably being thick, which helps HM a lot. Oh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, can't stand clock with passion. Listen, he's a great manager. Don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand me. I think he is an absolutely fantastic manager. And it's not just him that I have a problem with him on that basis of moaning about, oh, we've got so many fixtures. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, we need a winter break. Oh, this is terrible. This doesn't happen in Germany. I, I just can't stand it. Like I say, you knew what English football was all about. Don't tell me that you've come, you've teleported to this planet this from the planet Zanussi or something like that. You knew full well what was happening. You knew full well we didn't have winter breaks. You knew full well that it was, you had League Cup games, FA Cup games, European games, yada, yada, yada. You knew that when you came in. You knew that when you signed the contract. You knew that when you're taking your monthly wage. Don't fucking moan about it now. It, it, it just does my head in. Like I say, not just Jurgen Klopp, but he is one that seems to, he, he does it quite a lot. He does it quite a lot. And as I say, I'm not casting aspersions on his his skills as a manager. You look at his achievements at, at Borussia Dortmund and Liverpool. Fantastic manager. Can't complain, but I just think he moans a lot. Um, Klopp moaning that Wolves fans were cheering Man City goals. What does he want? What does he expect? It's called banter. It's called banter, Mr. Klopp. That's just the way it is. That's English sense of humour, which if you if you get it, you get it. And if you don't, you don't. Um, Charlie says to Charlie, um, yeah, I agree, bro. I think selection is a more difficult job than it is made on, honestly. Yeah, listen, there's probably an awful lot of things that go on behind closed doors, an awful lot of conversations that we will never be privy to. The, the average fan in the street, which is me, looks at some squads though and go and says how did, did he get in and like I say the the example that I used earlier which you don't know if he was around I, I used the example of Jesse Lingard getting in at the beginning of the season that's just finished and I think he'd played eight minutes for Manchester United I I that completely just I was like what's that all about how sad never mind <laughs> yeah that's uh wins Davis it ain't half hot man wasn't it oh dear how sad never mind um, hammerhead, go to City and rot on the bench or get regular football. Well, it depends upon what you want, doesn't it? 
Um, I mean, it's it's one of those. I mean, Jack Grealish went, didn't he? And he he probably left a team that he he knew he was going to play for every week. And he hasn't played for City every week, but he's got a Premier League winners medal, and he's he's probably had this first season to bed in, you know. So, a um, lot of lot of lot of players go to sort of what they think is bigger a bigger club, and it is a lot of the time. Let's be honest, and it doesn't work out. Felipe Coutinho going to Barcelona, um, Scott Parker going to Tottenham from a relegated West Ham where he just won the Football Writers Player of the Year award. That was an amazing achievement, wasn't it? To be in a relegated team and be voted Player of the Year by the Football Writers Association. That was incredible. Um, but then he went to Tottenham, so it sported it a little bit. Um, but he didn't really sort of do as well there, as far as I can remember. Luke, I don't think Southgate picks on club bias. He doesn't play Trent Alexander-Arnold, and he is the media darling. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'm not too sure what, what that's all about. I mean, Trent, <sighs> club allegiances aside, I'd have him in the squad, but that's just me. Um, Joan, Charlie, I agree. Klopp is hard to take, whereas Pep is a class act. Listen, like I say, it's not, not me having a pop at Klopp for being a crap manager. He clearly isn't. He's a wonderful manager. But I, like I say, I do think he moans a lot. The other thing that kind of annoyed me was the FA Cup final where you had the, the Liverpool fans booing the national anthem and, and Prince William and all that. And he tried to justify it, defend it. He was like, oh, well, they're very intelligent. They must be booing for a reason. Words to that effect. And I just thought, mate, seriously, no need. Um, with another manager, Gatesy, we could have won one of those tournaments. He's not good enough to be England manager. OK, let me look at it from another way. Um, you're looking at glass half empty. I'll go glass half full. With another manager, we might not have got to those finals and semi-finals in the first place. He was the guy there, so he has to be the recipient of credit and blame, if you will, in equal measure. He was the one that got us there, and no one else has other than Alf Ramsey. So it is what it is. Um, Charlie, I'm not overly wanting it, Mark, but I, it wouldn't worry me if he did leave now. We need a solid long-term centre-back partnership. And to be honest, Dawson isn't part of that yet. I mean, he's, he's aged. But then again, centre-backs tend to go on a little bit longer, though, don't they? And he's never had, he's never really had sort of long periods of injury and stuff like that, has he? So he could go on another couple of years. Um, but you do go on to say he would be a great third or fourth choice squad player. Um, Peter. Love it if Liverpool won up in extra time, Madrid equalise in the last minute and then win on penalties. Peter, you may very well say that. I could not possibly comment. <laughs> now, listen, I've I've got friends that are, that are Liverpool fans. I mean, Doug, who was on earlier, he's a Liverpool fan. And all I will say is may the best team win. May the team that deserves it on the day be the team that lifts the European Cup. Can't say fairer than that. If Liverpool were the better team on the day, then Jordan Henderson lifts it, I hope. And if they're not, then he won't. Real simple. Um, we need someone who knows how to win. Again, that's easy to say, but who realistically could England get to be England manager that would do better than the guy that's in charge right now? Uh, I'll leave that with you. Uh, Southgate started with the under-21s and they progressed massively. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, I fall asleep once. <laughs> yeah, he, he's not the most... He, he doesn't hold your attention very well, does he? He's not a great orator, is he? He's a, he's a bit... <sighs> um, Luke Legend, uh, Hammerhead, bit harsh. Look at the shambles he picked up. Roy Shambles, Big Samble. Sh yeah, Big Samble. Yeah, don't forget, he's got the best win percentage of any England manager. 100% win ratio, and he never conceded a goal. Be fair, Luke. Be fair. <laughs> um, it's no good unless you start at the lower age groups. Yes, true. Um, Luke Legend, Southgate lost us the Euros. Yeah, but he got us there. But he got us there. You know, you, you can't sort of turn around and say he lost. Yeah, listen, I'm not saying that I disagree. Could he have done better in that final? Yeah, obviously, with hindsight, you've got to say if he'd have done this, if he'd have done that, maybe. But he got us there. 
you can't have it both ways. Um, now Leeds have stayed up, says Charlie. I don't see Phillips coming to us, to be honest. In my opinion, he only leaves Leeds for a super sick club. As I say, it was on Talk Sport this morning, Charlie. You probably heard it. City are looking at him. So he ain't coming to us. If, if City go in, he ain't coming to us. He seriously isn't. Um, Joan says, Hammerhead, who would you like as England boss? Exactly what I've asked. And like I say, be realistic. It's not going to be Pep Guardiola. It's not going to be Jurgen Klopp. It's not going to be Jose Mourinho. So who realistically could we get? Um, and that's the thing. You've got to be realistic. Uh, Andy Goldstein said it about Bowen. Fair enough. Um, Hammerhead says, Jose Moyes, Eddie Howe, or even Frank Lampard. I don't see that Jose is going to be England manager because I think he would want more money than what the FA would be prepared to pay. Um, Moyes as England manager? No chance. No chance. Um, I think any Scotsman that's worth their salt, they they would rather crawl over broken glass with their flies unzipped than be an English football manager. I'm telling you that now. Um, Eddie Howe. I don't see him being England manager in the next couple of years, but possibly maybe five years down the track, because I think that possibly you'll find that Eddie Howe is something of a transitional manager for Newcastle, probably in the same way that Mark Hughes was for Man City or Pellegrini was. Because Pellegrini was essentially a transitional manager. I know he won the Premier League with um, City, but he was he was brought in as a transitional manager for Pep, essentially. He was the bridge between Pat Mancini leaving and Pep coming in. Pellegrini was that bridge. Um, four, three poor Penos lost us the Euros. Harry Kane turning in the final would have been nice. Yeah, I mean, penalties, there's nothing you can do. I think there were certain things he could have done before it got to that. But listen, like I say, you, you could turn around and say he could have done this differently, he could have done that, but it was penalties. It was also the tug back on... Saka from uh, Chiellini. Dirty bastard. Um, sorry, I've just clicked by that. For, for West Ham as manager, not, may, not many, maybe Eddie Howe. As I say, Eddie Howe ain't leaving Newcastle, but yeah, I, I wouldn't mind him at West Ham one day. Um, yeah, I'd probably say, yeah, let, let, me, let me rephrase, because I said earlier, I said um, Graham Potter and... Brendan Rogers. I'll add Eddie Howe to that list. They would possibly be three guys that if Moyes went tomorrow and one of those three came in as West Ham manager, I'd go, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, other than that, realistically, I don't really see that there's anyone that we could attract that would do a better job than Moyes with, with what Moyes has got. Just my opinion, of course. Um, Goldstein's been winding me up for years, yeah. Take, take the notice of him. Um, and Jose says Hammerhead. Um, Charlie, come on, Hammerhead. I was kind of with you until you suggested bloody Frank the Fraud Lampard. Steady, steady. And Potter is another one. Yeah, I, I, I said that um, earlier. Talking about England, Charlie. Yep. Uh, no, I know he's lucky to have a premier job, let alone a good enough to be an England manager. Fair enough. Um, Hammerhead, I'm on the fence because the squad loves Southgate, but I get what you mean about winning finals. Yeah, as I say, but in fairness... He, he did get us there. Like I say, you could turn around and say we should have won it, but we, you know, it was a penalty shootout. It, you might as well toss a coin once you get to that stage. I feel Lampard would be an ex exceptional as England manager. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 one of those. I mean, there's part of me that thinks no, surely he needs to prove himself at club management first. But then again. Southgate really didn't cover himself in much glory as Middlesbrough manager, did he? I mean, he got them relegated. But as I say, in my opinion, I think he's done quite well as an England manager. Again, just my opinion. Other people might disagree. Um, and like I say, I can pick holes in Gareth Southgate and there's certain decisions he makes where I just go, mate, I don't agree with that at all. But I don't know everything um, that goes on behind the scenes. Charlie, the FA need to try and get some need to try and time Southgate's departure whenever it may be. Isn't he in until the next Euros? So he goes through this next World Cup and then I think he goes through the qualification to the Euros, which will obviously be in 2024. And I th I think that's when his contract's currently going to end. Well, I might have that wrong. Um, but yeah, I think there should always be a sort of like, if as much as you ever can. I mean, sometimes managers leave, managers 
you know, walk out because they've had a better offer elsewhere and, and you're like, oh, fuck, I wasn't expecting that. But I always think that you should have, like, succession planning in place. So um, to be in time with Pep leaving City, um, yeah, I mean, there are certain managers that, that maybe are not cut out for international management, don't want to do international management. Um, Pep, I'd love... I think he he's he comes across as a really infectious personality. He comes across as really, I think he comes across really well in in interviews. I think he's and he's fan, he's a fantastic coach. His players love him. Um, but international management is a different animal. Um, take oh uh, Fabio Capello. Fabio Capello was an absolutely brilliant manager back in the day. Won Serie A, won La Liga, won. Um, European Cups, left, right and centre. Came to England? Nope. Nope. Um, but yeah, Pep is a winner, as you put it there. Um, what have you missed? Just waffling on from me, sweetheart. Just exactly what Andy says. Just the usual waffle. Um, but luckily, she likes waffles. I, I'm saying no more than that. Um just a few little happies. Uh, Gatesy just said Lanzini is a disgrace to the club. You lying little toad. Get yourself on that naughty step. Um, Hammerhead. Dawson has more technical ability and more in his locker than Maguire. I have to disagree when you've seen Maguire play the ball 40, 50 yards. I agree. Yeah, that I, that I will concede. And that is something that when he's done that, where he sprayed those 50, 60 yard balls, cross field balls, two feet i've sort of gone whoa i wasn't expecting that he, yeah he does do that i still maintain that if you put everything into the the melting pot like i say age and experience at playing at the, the highest level which maguire has and dawson doesn't the highest level he has played at is for us in the europa league whereas maguire has played for england he's played in Champions League matches, etc. So, like I say, it's just my opinion, Hammerhead. It's just my opinion. I'm not saying Dawson's shit. I'm not saying that Maguire is the next Bobby Moore. I'm not. But I'm just saying that I can... Overall, I think that Maguire probably is the better bet long-term. But in the last couple of months, as I say, Dawson, in my opinion, should be in the England team ahead of Maguire. Just on that. Um... I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. And if you believe him, then I'm going to have to use your real name, Short Stack. Um, just saying hello. Uh, Bowen for England, Rice clock contract release clause. Yep, that's that's basically where we're at, Happy. That is basically where you're at. Joan has marked your card. Unfortunately, Dawson isn't good enough for England. Yeah, he, he, if, we, if we're being honest, he probably isn't. But if he isn't, how and like I say, I think he's been that he's been better than Maguire. Maguire probably shouldn't be in the England squad then. Um, Maguire's one attribute Dawson doesn't have is being able to run fast and backwards and going forwards. Isn't that Roger Johnson? Um, I saw our very own Bowen got the call up. Well done to him, so he deserves it. Yep, absolutely. Um, Shearer didn't score for about 16 England games pre Euro 96. I remember that. I remember that. Um, and very, Mr. Venables was getting an awful lot of stick at the time for it. Um, but he did come good in the tournament, it has to be said. Um, if Dawson isn't good enough, neither should Maguire. Maguire doesn't have the ability of Dawson. Anyone can see it. Fair, fair enough. Um, put another 10 million on the value of Bowen, of the England call up. Yeah, it it will do. Uh, and it will it will obviously attract. If he if he plays well for England, if he scores. Listen, it, that's 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 the price of success. You know, when you get a player, when we're operating at the level we are and we have players that excel like Bowen has this season, like Rice has done up to this point, they get called up for England. Then people start talking and, Oh, this player should go to Liverpool and that player should go to Man City. And like I say, I take it as a bit of a backhanded compliment. If none of the, if none of our players were being spoken about in those terms, if if none of our players were being linked to clubs of that calibre, and instead were being linked with Wrexham and Portsmouth, with all due respect to those clubs, 
Um, then I'd be concerned. Um, Dawson's stats are impressive. Yep, they are. Stats don't lie. Someone else said that. I can't remember who it was. Um, Eamon says, you can put a good player in bad form in the squad because, like I said, form is temporary, class is permanent. How do you expect a player to get back into form if you don't play them? Yeah, it's it's one of those though, Eamon, isn't it? You know, there there does come a point. I know what you're saying. You you kind of have to play yourself back into form, but there's also an argument to be said for there has to come a point where, as a manager, you have to recognise now I need to take that player out for their own long term benefit for the team and everything else. Um, and it's finding that sweet spot, isn't it? That's the thing. Um, words and pictures. Hello, Rob. Have you decided yet if your channel will be following England in Qatar? Um, I'll be honest with you, words and pictures. I haven't discussed it with Duke at any length, but I suspect we probably will because we did for the Euros, didn't we? So, I mean, generally for friendlies, I don't really, I, I can't get up for friendlies. And to be honest with you, the qualification process as well. Um, my wife's just waving at me. Uh, she just turned up from work, bless her. Um, do you want to get the cat? No, <laughs> I'm pushing me luck there. I've actually got my cup of tea here, actually. Owen made it before he left, so I'm, get I'm getting told off. She's telling me off. Listen, there could be a murder happening anytime soon, so listen, you're all witnesses. So, what thrown at me? What, right now? Okay, that'd be nice. There's domestic going on. Uh, what, you gonna feed me dog food? Well, pedigree chum surprise, nice. Um, yeah, in, in answer to the question, I suspect we will, as I have, I say, I haven't had a conversation with Duke, but I suspect we will. Um, but watch this space, but yeah, probably very likely. Um, Zuma's case doesn't look good, yeah. I mean, look happy short stack we there's no i mean he's pleaded guilty there's no way that he could have done anything but i mean the the video was damning evidence and let's be honest we know how it works if he'd have gone in there and pleaded not guilty and he gets found guilty then he obviously gets a stiffer sentence the fact that he's actually held his hands up and gone guilty is charged whatever he gets will be a lesser um, a lesser sentence, and I'm not saying custodial sentence. I don't suspect it will be that he's got to sort of go in the B wing and sort of soap on a rope with Bubba or anything like that. You know, um, be like a scene from uh, scene from Scum. What's going on there? Don't go to the potting shed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it will probably be a metaphorical slap on the wrists. It will be a bit of community service, very likely. He'll get a few more songs sung at him in grounds when he, the season starts back again. And then it will be forgotten about in six months time because that's just the way that it works, rightly or wrongly. Um, Eamon, Alan Shearer was in terrible form in 96, but then all of a sudden he exploded with the goals. Yeah, it was mentioned just a little bit earlier. Um, Centre-halves dropping like flies. Yeah, well, we obviously lost a few earlier this season. I'm not talking... England centre-backs, centre obviously. Um, Dawson Park exchange for Pope or Cornet. Dan from the Turf Morehouse, the, the Burnley fan channel, he turned around and said that if Burnley got relegated, apparently there is a clause in Maxwell Cornet's deal that says that he can be released if there is a club that comes in and meets the release clause. And he reckons it's eight million quid. I, I don't know whether that's right or wrong, but I'm sure he said eight million quid gets Maxwell Cornet out of out of Burnley. I would have him out of there in a heartbeat. I know you could turn around and say, yeah, but he, he didn't exactly set the world alight when he played us at London Stadium. He had that crappy penalty, blah, 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 all of which is true. But I think he's a cracking player. I would have him no problem. And if Dawson wants to go back up north, yeah, it, it, it could be a it could be a way that, that works for both. I would probably say, I would say Cornet because I think we need a forward more than we need a goalkeeper because I think that Ariola's going to sign on the dotted line. Um, Luke says, I never get this move up north to be closer to the family. It's about 200 miles. England is hardly the USA. Yeah, but 
listen, if that's where he's happiest, if that's if that's where he, he ultimately wants to reside, I, I got no problem with it. It is what it is. Uh, no comment, Happy. No comment. Charlie, uh, not sure I've heard anything I didn't expect at this point, Happy, unless I've missed something. I imagine at the very, very worst, he will get a suspended sentence, but more likely a fine and community service. Yep. Yep. That's pretty much what I've just said there. And Chris is in. <laughs> get the new background. Cheers, mate. Hope you are well. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, is Klopp related to that bloke who hangs out with Ricky Gervais? No idea, mate. I, I, I've got no idea who hangs out with Ricky Gervais. I, I, to be honest, I don't keep up with a lot of it. He's a, he's a funny guy, don't get me wrong, but I've got no idea. Um, I get that, Luke, but how often do you expect a top-level pro footballer to have the time to travel 400 miles and spend any decent quality time with family during the season? Yeah. Um, Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire. I couldn't work out, Charlie, my brain fart. Couldn't work out who Harry Maguire of uh, HM was. Um, have we signed anyone yet? Um, no, we haven't. I'm going through the comments. I will. I will. I'll tell you what. Hold on. Let me just have a look. You've asked the question, Short Stack. That's my little nickname for her. I'm just going to have a look on the One Football website. Are there any transfer stories? I mean, as I say, Gonzo did one this morning about Nayef Agird, and I won't regurgitate that story. Oh, here we go. This is this is an old story, but it says here West Ham contact Jesse Lingard's representatives over a possible free transfer. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get this up on screen, and you you guys can have a look. Hang on, let me just get rid of that. Isn't technology wonderful? Um. So, yeah, just scroll down. This is from the website Stretty News. So, yeah, it's a it's a Manchester-leaning publication. So this says, West Ham have reportedly reignited their interest in midfielder Jesse Lingard. That's according to a recent report from Sky Sports who claim the Hammers have made contact with the England International's representatives over a possible summer move. Lingard, 29, enjoyed a successful loan spell with the Hammers last season, scoring nine goals in just 16 appearances. However, fast forward 12 months and now available on a free transfer this summer, following the Red Devils' failure to extend his contract, sees Lingard's long-term future back up in the air. Although tipped to rejoin the Hammers since last season's loan came to an end, talk of a reunion with David Moyes in London had called until now. Jesse Lingard enjoyed a successful loan spell with West Ham last season. Moyes, who spoke to reporters last year, confirmed that signing Lingard on a permanent deal was blocked by former manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, he made it clear to me that he quite early in the transfer window that he wanted to keep him the English. That's, that's interesting. The English manager has said um, they clearly don't know that David Moyes is Scottish. Are you having a laugh? My God. God, the English manager. So I knew pretty early in the transfer window, that has tickled me, um, that he was staying at Manchester United. I had a private conversation with Ole, who made it clear that he was staying. However, following these latest reports, it now appears a potential deal is back on the cards. It's understandable why the Hammers may be keen to re-sign Lingard. The club are desperately short on quality and depth, which was laid bare during the latter stages of the 21-22 season. Ain't that the truth? Set to compete on all four fronts again next season, Lingard's inclusion would certainly offer the Londoners a major boost. Yeah, I... Listen, Lingard, I'd take him in a heartbeat. If you if you got Lingard in, right, let's say he played... Let's, let's say he played 35 of 38 Premier League games. Let's say he had a couple of games he was out injured or whatever. Let's say he played 35 games. How many goals and assists do you think he's adding? I, th I think he's getting eight goals minimum. Minimum eight goals in 35 Premier League games. I think if, if with the wind is back, possibly 10 to 12 assists. Possibly approaching double figures again. If we'd have had that this season, or even if we'd have signed him in January, on a on a, 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 a the last six months of his contract at United, let's say that we'd have done that. We're not finishing seventh. We're not finishing seventh, and we're very probably getting to the final of the Europa League and possibly winning it. Just my opinion. Um, but let us know what you think about Jesse Lingard. I mean, I, I would take him in a heartbeat. I know there are people out there, and Duke might be one. I know he's he's said a few things on a few occasions about 
you know, he didn't want to come to us, so bollocks move on, and that's fine. But I just think that that's kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face a little bit. Um, Luke says they work about four hours a day and can afford a, afford a plane if needs be. Not being harsh, but it is doable. Walnut managed up north and lived in Cornwall. Yeah, that is that is true. Um, he, he's lived in Cornwall for quite a while, and he's managed in Sheffield. He's managed in London. He's managed in, in Middlesbrough. And he, he lived in Cornwall the whole time. But I think possibly it's different when you're a manager. That's the only thing. I do think you're comparing apples and oranges. I, I'm not saying that it can't be done, but everybody's different. Just because Neil Warnock, maybe Neil Warnock's got a different outlook on life and, and Craig Dawson is, is not aligned with that. You know, that's just the way it is. Um Short stack. We really need to get Bowen on a longer contract before England, his England run out. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Before his England run out. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, I agree. I don't disagree with that. I'm just going to scroll back. I've got so many comments here. Um, I, I don't know if I can keep up with it. I really don't. Um, new tea lady. Spurs <laughs> Cheeky. Cheeky. Hello, Madrid. Uh, so you won't be supporting Liverpool in the final then. Um, Andy, I take it. Um, I'll be totally honest here. I know no Liverpool or Manure fans who actually live there. Neither do I. <laughs> I had to think, but no, I don't. Um, that is that is a fair observation, though. Um, you don't live in Manchester or Liverpool. Neither do I. Um, any rumours on Stuart Pearce's next move? Yeah, I, again, I've heard a whisper and I don't know if I should say it, but... If I've heard the whispers, then possibly an awful lot of you have heard it. So I don't think it's any great secret is that he wanted to, again, similar to the rumour with Craig Dawson, that he wants to go back and spend some time with his family. I think he's getting married. So, like I say, everybody's different. Um, Graham Potter for England, says James. Hmm. I think eventually, yes, I I would like to see that happen. Um, but as I say, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing him as the next West Ham manager or what, or, or certainly in contention, let's put it that way. And I'm guessing that if you rate him that highly, that you'd have him as the national team manager, that you'd probably be happy with that statement that, that if, if he was on the, 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 the menu, if you will, when Moyes eventually calls it a day, if, if Graham Potter was linked, I dare say you'd be happy because um, I know I would be. Um, we lost the Euros win Southgate sub rice. Uh, that I can't disagree with. I think that was that was the substitution that I did look at and go, what are you doing? Because he was play he was the man of the match at that up to that point. Um, aside from the pride of our own hammers being picked to play for the national team, I really don't care that much for the tournament. Hate certain players all year and then expected to cheer them on. Yeah, you do have to put your club allegiances to one side. It's a bit like after the World Cup in 98, everybody was booing David Beckham, hanging effigies from lampposts and all the rest of it. And then we got to the following World Cup in Japan and Korea and he gets that penalty against Argentina four years later against the same opposition, and everybody was hailing him as a national icon and the hero and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But club football over England for about 99.9% .9 of people. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a proud Englishman. I want my team, my, my country to do well. I'd love to be able to see us win a World Cup or a European Championship before I shuffle off this mortal coil. But West Ham come first. West Ham do come first. That is that is indisputable. And I think most fans of clubs would agree with that sentiment. Um, clearly not, but any respective fans I have met have not come from the club's home. Yeah, that is true. I I don't know many fans that I've bumped into that are West that are Man United or Liverpool fans that actually have any connection with them, in all honesty. Um won't be watching the World Cup due to it being um in off with their heads country. Ooh, Peter. When does it even start? Um, November-ish. I've got November the... I think it's... I think it's November the 21st. And there's a reason why I know that date, but I'm not going to go any further with that. But I'm pretty sure it's November the 21st. Um, 
Sorry, I love a World Cup, but it's great. Five weeks. Come on, England. Yeah, listen, I'm not saying I don't enjoy the, the World Cup. I think the last World Cup actually was was a very good World Cup. The Euros were, were very entertaining. Um, I will watch it. I can't lie. Um, but there you go. Uh, yeah, as I say, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's 21st of November. Um, yes, you don't come from London, but you know, we'll forgive you. Uh, we'll let you, we'll let you, you stay here. Will you be celebrating with Kane when he scores and fist pumps? Of course, of course you will. You, you want England to win. So I, I'll make no, uh, no, none of that. None of that. Steady, Peter. Um, she's asking a question. What was Luke's first draw to the Hammers? Oh, oh, that'd be interesting. Uh, come on, Harry Kane, while in the English shirt. I don't mind Kane, to be honest. Son is a different man. Listen, Son is world class. Son is world class player. And if he if he turned up at West Ham and was playing on the left hand side instead of Pablo Fornells, we'd all hail him as a hero. Let's be completely honest. Um, because he plays for that lot along the North Circular, then we we all call him rude words. Um Queen will send him the town when he fails. Um Tony Cotty 1986, that's the reason why you're a West Ham fan. Very, very good, very good reasoning. Um, Peter Harry Kane has been signed up for Forest Gump two when he retires. Cheeky, um, Josie won things at Man United, so why they moaned is beyond me. He won it in his first season, as I recollect, didn't he? Win the League Cup and the Europa League in his first season, and then it went a little bit Pete Tong. Um, Man United swap for Harry Maguire. I'm being mischievous. Um, Harry Kane got an MBE. He said, he said what England play like. Where England? Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Kate has mi- Kane has missed the boat on winning things as a club player by not going to Man City. I had this discussion with my missus because, as you probably know, she is a Spurs fan. And he's got a year left on his contract, as I remember. And obviously there was a lot of noise about City and all the rest of it, where he's not going to City now because they've signed Haaland. So why would they need Kane with all due respect? So I think that he's probably, he's, he's going to be there for this coming season, isn't he? I don't see that Tottenham are going to sell him now. Um, whether they get him to sign an extension to his contract, I don't know. What is Harry Kane going to be at the end of his current contract? Approaching 30. Is he possibly then going to bugger off to the United States, do a Rain Rooney, David Beckham. I, I don't know. Listen, he, if he wanted to, if he stayed in England until he retires, and unless he got any bad injuries, I think that Alan Shearer's Premier League record of 260 Premier League goals is very likely under threat if Harry Kane sticks around. But we'll see. Uh, I mean, the last couple of months, Shabbos, yeah, yeah, he, he has, he has, yeah, it's, it's my French bulldog, Pete. What can you do? Um, Dawson can also play the piano in the dressing room. Maguire can't do that. I didn't know that. He, he likes a tinkle on the ivories, does he? Yeah. Hay- Hayden Fox did that once, didn't he? Or am I thinking of something else? Bone is worth more than Grealish at the moment. Um, I actually did a, a, a little comparison, and uh, I don't know if I can find it. It was on the Premier League website. Let me have a look if I can find it. Because I, I did a player comparison. Where is it? Head to head. There we go. Right. Uh, no, that's. I don't want. That's for teams, players. No, I'll tell you what. I can't be asked to find it. Um, but basically, <laughs> I, I did the. And it's probably a bit mischievous on my part, but. Saeed Ben Rama is obviously someone that's come in for a bit of criticism. In in some circumstances, I can understand it, and some of it is justified. Some, not all of it. Um, but Saeed Ben Rama was twenty five million pounds. Jack Grealish was a hundred million pounds. If you look at their Premier League stats, and I did this was a couple of weeks back, so obviously there's been some movement. But I think that you'll still find that Saeed Ben Rama, his goals and assist stats compared to Jack Grealish's are significantly better and he's a player that cost a quarter of uh, what Grealish cost. I'm not saying that Saeed Ben Rama should go to Manchester City. Um, you know, maybe he could do a job there, maybe, but 
it, it was an interesting comparison. Let's let's put it like that: that a guy that was a quarter of the price has probably done double, maybe more in terms of goals and assists. Um, Greenish puts more effort into getting pissed in nightclubs than he does on the pitch. Um, and Duke's there. Listen, hold on. Have you sent me a message? No, you haven't. Okay. Um, if you haven't finished work, if you want to jump on and join me, mate, you're more than welcome. Um, oh, only popping in at work. Oh, he's answered that one. Fair enough. Uh, can't get up for friendlies. It's an age thing. Yeah, uh, behave. Steady. Um, Charlie, I quite enjoyed the Nations League, to be honest. Much better than the endless friendlies we used to have. Appreciate we still have some, but it's a bit like the snobbery to the Conference League. Yeah, as I say, I didn't understand. They brought in the... The, the Nations League to do away with meaningless friendlies and we still have meaningless friendlies so you haven't done away with it it's just another money making exercise for is it is it FIFA or is it UEFA it is UEFA isn't it so it's just another money making exercise for UEFA that's that's all it is tablets for that Lukey steady uh tell her the dog food won't be win a lot if the Spurs fan makes it I'm saying nothing she's in the next room she might hear me um, no more pets in that household for life. Fair enough. I heard that West Ham provided the security to take him to court. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the footage, but I can imagine that there were probably animal rights ex activists um, with placards and calling him rude words. Am I am I close? I'm, I'm guessing that's probably what happened. Uh, get, get Pope and his car in now. Hmm? I, listen, I... I'd take Pope, but I think that if we're going to play a counter-attacking style of football, which we have under Moyes, and I don't see that changing, then I think that Ariola's the better goalkeeper in terms of setting counter-attacks going. In terms of their shot-stopping abilities, I don't think there's much to choose between them. So on balance, I think that Ariola would be the better bet. But if it comes down to the fact that Ariola is going to cost too much in terms of transfer fee, wages and the whole package. And we just simply can't make the budget stretch that far because we obviously want to get players in other positions. And if Nick Pope is possibly going to be a little bit more reasonable in that front, then I, I yeah, I'd take Nick Pope. Don't get me wrong. I just think that, like I say, I just think that Ariola is a better fit. Just my opinion. Maybe he does, Luke. But again, you may very well say that. I could not possibly comment. Um, Charlie, don't think Corne is Moise's type of player. Yeah, it's probably probably a bit like Ben Rama, if I'm being honest. Like I say, I would get him in. I'm not convinced that Moyes would. But if what I was told is release, if his release clause is eight million quid, that's punt money, Charlie. That is punt money. Um Giza didn't even know he had signed for Burnley permanently and thought that he was there on loan and asked to go back to his parent club. Is that true? Is that true or is that some sort of urban myth? Um, Peter Crouch, a striker, it is then. Oh, don't. Um, straight choice between Ari or Polo. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm quite behind on this, Charlie, so I'm just sort of picking my way through. Um, you've obviously gone Pope or Pipe. Maybe you've gone pipe. I don't know, but you, you corrected yourself afterwards. But um, no, as I say, I would go Ariola because I, I think that he's um, stylistically, he would be a better fit for a team playing counter-attacking football than Nick Pope. But I don't think there's much between them in their shot-stopping ability. So on balance, I would probably go Pope on that basis. Sorry, Ariola on that basis. But if the package to get, Ariola through the door is just too much and we can't make the budget stretch, then Pope would be a good check and choice. Um, did you hear that Bone had gone into training at Hull to be told when he arrived that he had signed that we had signed him? Said he was so happy and he called his dad straight away. Didn't know that one. Um, and happy's laughing at the the little slip of the keyboard. It's because the I and the O are next to each other on the keyboard, happy. Um, or the autocorrect got involved. Um, Luke, Ariola on ability, Pope on the fact that he won't want 150k a week. Well, what I heard, and again, this is a story that's out there in the public domain, so it's not like I'm an ITK and I'm telling everything, everyone something where everyone goes, oh, this is already out there. Um, PSG are talking about subsidizing his his wages to get him off the books. You know, we've we've had it before where we've subsidized things. You, you look at um who was it uh, that, that left? There was a player that we had to 
was it Anderson? Was it Felipe Anderson? And we had to sort of pay this, that, and the other to get him off. Oh, excuse me, or get him off the books. So it happens. Maybe, maybe for once we're gonna we're gonna be the pigeon and not the statue in that aspect. Pope is always smoking against us, not literally. Um, didn't PSG offer to subsidise his wages for another season? Yes, they did. More chance we will get Jesse from Little Mix. You may be right. Now, I, I think we got a chance of getting Lingard. I know there's talk about Newcastle, and if it's if he's going to go for money, then he'll go to Newcastle. If he's going to go to somewhere where he'll know he'll fit in and he'll be happy, then he'll come here. Um, and we've got European football, and Newcastle haven't, so maybe we got to leverage that as an advantage. Uh, PSG may have cut their wage bills; they're paying and back hundred million pounds. Do you know what I heard earlier on? Just real quick, as that apparently in the deal that he signed, he's apparently got some sort of influence in terms of if Poch gets the tin and they bring someone else in. He's apparently got some sort of influence in that and transfer policy and this, that and the other. And that is a very dangerous road to go down when you are giving a player that sort of level of power at a club. Very dangerous road to go down. Good luck, PSG. I don't mean that. Fuck them. Um, Man United should have stuck with Ole until the end of the season. That would have helped us because I don't think they'd have finished sixth with him in, in harness. I've got to be honest. Um, Charlie, probably agree, Luke. I don't don't think Ariola would cost us 150 per week as it will probably be somewhat subsidised by PSG. I'd go Pope because I think he's pretty much on par ability-wise and ticks the English quote stats. Yeah, that's another thing, Charlie. Obviously, he is English. So that's, that's a, a tick that he has that Ariola can't have. But as I say, in terms of him being setting the counter-attacks going, as I say, I, I would think that Ariola has the, the edge there. Um, who is this mini-mum you are talking about? Don't know. Don't know. As I say, I'm, I'm a little bit behind, mate. I am, I'm looking at the comments. I am well behind. But it's because I like the interaction. I like to try and get as many of your comments up. In fact, I think I've got all of your comments up so far and, and given you a little bit back. Um, I want Lingard back for sure, but I, it needs to be done quickly. Nothing stopping him this time around. Correct. Um, Pope for me as well. Uh, see? Oh, Charlie. Yeah, it's all right, mate. You, it's the abbreviation. Sometimes I have to sort of go... What's that mean? And then, I, yeah, you're talking to Charlie. Solid English lad. Yeah. And he used to ply his trade not far from where I am right now. He used to be on the books at Charlton. Um, in fact, I think that was where he went to Burnley from, if I remember correctly. Um, I think I think what we know, we know Areola works well with the squad. Yeah, that's another advantage that Areola has over Pope. We know that he gets on with the squad. The squad gets on with him. Pope might come in and who knows, he might be a complete and total cock as far as everybody else is concerned. And everybody else might be a complete and total cock as far as he's concerned. And it, ju it just might be that they don't fundamentally get on. So what do you do? Um, as much as I like Goggy. We, oh, you mean Oggy, I'm guessing. Um, we can't give him a new contract due to two big injuries in the last two seasons. Yet yeah, we cannot. Um, well, we, well, we can. I mean, didn't he turn around and say, Sullivan, that it, we're going to give him a new contract? Because he's actually out of contract at the, is it the 30th of June, I think it is, his contract runs out, or 1st of July, whatever it is. And and Sullivan's already, he turned around and said, no, we are going to. <laughs> internet's dropped out that's what's happened in case you're all sitting there thinking what the bloody hell's happened my pc that it just all of a sudden just went oh um so it's it's not you it's me this is what can happen with modern technology so i've now jumped on my phone 
I'm just waiting for the internet to reconnect. Bloody Sky, I tell you what, I think it was about a year ago, something like that, because obviously we started doing the internet, the, the, the YouTube channel and whatever else. So I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get some super fast broadband and all the rest of it. And I got it. And honestly, it's it's with Sky. So if anyone from, from Sky is watching this, very unlikely, I know. But I tell you what, your super fast broadband and all the rest of it, it's fucking pitiful. And you can shove it up your ass. Um, it, honestly, it's it's just like, ah, oh, it keeps dropping out at moments where I, I'm doing a recording or a stream or whatever. And it's like, for Christ's sakes, this is meant to be super duper, really. Um, I'm just going to have a little wind back and see if I can get any. Uh, I've got no idea where the I got up to, guys. I've really not. As I say, you're all piling in. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I didn't say that, Mr. Woodgate, you provocative bugger. I did not say that. I just said that in terms of the stats he is better than Jack Grealish and he was, he was a quarter of the money. Um, but there you go. Uh, first time I saw Grealish play. I apologize if I've missed comments because as I say, I'm, I'm back, I'm on my phone. So I'm, I'm not going all the way back. Uh, first time I saw Grealish play well, um, was the <laughs> game of the season for Man City. And who was that against? I wonder, um, Benny didn't play football. So maybe he was a better piano player. Maybe, um, Darren, hope you are well. um, Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, is my memory playing tricks on me? You, you're you're in Colchester, and haven't haven't you just been made a city? I'm pretty sure that's right. Congratulations. There you go. Um, I hope they water cannon those placards. What are we talking about? The um, uh, is is that Zuma? I, I don't know. Um, Charlie try and and Duke to say this. Oh, you talking about Ben Rama? I, 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 yeah, talking about Ben Rama. Um, yeah, that will probably get Duke foaming at the mouth. Talk, just, just, just say that Ben Rama's the greatest thing since sliced bread, and he'll <laughs> he'll give you a slightly different response. Um, he, listen, he turns around and says he wants him to do well, and and I'll tell you now, Duke Duke wants every player that represents West Ham to do well. Um, he just doesn't think that Ben Rama's a particularly good fit. I think my PC has now connected back to the internet, so I should in a moment be able to jump back on with a little bit more quality than this so just bear with me two tickeroonies right right there we go Always a plan B. There's always a plan B. Right. Okay. Now, can you all hear me? I take it you can hear me. Um, bu -bu 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 where did we get to? Uh, no. No. As I explained earlier, as I say, I got the Sky super duper, you know, get this, Mr. Gates. It's fantastic. Sign on the dotted line for, a, I think it was an 18-month contract or something like that. And the fucking thing drops out at opportune moments like that. You know, I'm doing a live stream. It's like, I don't need the internet to disappear up its own ass. Seriously. Um, yeah, that's what I've got, Trodge. Uh, uh, is, is it as crap for you as it is for me, dropping out? I mean, when it works, it's fine. It's just, like I say, you're doing a live stream. The last thing you need is for you to be waffling away. And all of a sudden, you get the donut of doom going around. And you're like... Ah, I'm talking to no one. Um, <laughs> hope you well, Peach. Um, yep, happy Mr. Sub Zero. Mr. Sub Zero, nice. Never gone wrong. Right, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to phone them, aren't I? Because something's clearly not right when it drops out like it does, completely out of nowhere. I'll be sitting there going, "What the hell's going on?" And I'll look at the route of which is behind me. And I'll see that one of the lights has gone off and it's like, I don't know if it's a loose connection somewhere in the whatever. I'm not a bloody um, Martin says, as much as I love Moyes for what he has done, I would go get Potter before Tottenham do. Yeah. Listen, I, Martin, if, if I had a choice of manager to replace David Moyes, 
Graham Potter would be on that shortlist. It would be Graham Potter, Brendan Rogers, and Eddie Howe. I think they would be the three that I think would be a good fit. As I say, I could sit here and say, let's get Pep, let's get Jurgen Klopp, whatever. But fundamentally, it's not going to happen because they're just not going to come to a club like us. Whereas those three conceivably could and could be a good fit. Um, you've got Sky Fiber as well. As I say, it must be something I'm probably going to have to get pick the phone up and say, listen, this is this is getting silly now because it keeps dropping out. Uh, if you're not into contract, look at Truly. Yeah, they've been advertising quite heavily around here. As, as I say, I think, if I remember rightly, when I got this thing, I think it was an 18-month contract. I'll, I'll, again, I'll have to check the small print, mate. Um, I reckon the Sky Installation Engineer was a spud and saw all his colours. Do you know what? We Did we have it installed by it? No, I did the installation. It was just like, here's your box, plug it in. Um, oh, but they they know they did do, they, they told me they had to do some jiggery-pokery at the box down the bottom, but I never actually saw the engineer and he never actually saw me. So if he knew I was a West Ham fan and if he was a spud, you never know. But uh, my sky's fine. Until the door gets in, yeah, I, I I know exactly what you're saying there. Short stack. Um, South End was made a city um, after the uh, David Amos got, was uh, stabbed, didn't they? That was that was uh, November last year. Colchester was became a city a couple of days ago. Something to do with the Queen and the Jubilee and all that. They, I think, Colchester's become a city, and there's a few others that have become cities. So Essex has now got three cities in in a very short space of time because they've that chelmsford became a city a year or two back something like that maybe more um south end obviously became a city because of david amos and colchester's just become a city so there you go essex has got three cities um kent has only got one which is canterbury rochester used to be a city and then apparently they needed to submit, uh, the story goes, they needed to put some paperwork in to keep city status. Somebody forgot. So they lost city status. What you get given can get taken away. Um, ration hurt a 10 a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I 10 minutes a day. Yeah. That's what I think you need to do, mate. Um, where are we? So Pete says, evening. Hope you're well, mate. Uh, used to go to South End with work. Well, what? <laughs> Steady. You ever been to Roots Hall, Luke? That's a fantastic football stadium. Actually, that has had its day. It's falling a bit. Um, I was there last um, last year with uh, Milesy watching. Well, West Ham's under twenty. Was it the twenty threes or the eighteens? No, I'm sure it was the twenty threes. Played South End. Um, South End is a dump. I remember going there many times with my missus when we were. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. Fine. Cheers, hat short stack. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> provocative bugger peter um yeah we used to go to south end quite a lot they used to have the you know the essex boys with the the lowered suspension and the neon lights under the car and the big exhaust and uh, it was, you know the the base yeah it was uh interesting now, i don't think it's changed very much because my sister-in-law lives in shoebury nest my brother my brother lives in shoebury now um and my mother-in-law lives in benfleet so we we're around that neck of the woods quite regularly uh but it is a nice pier there's it's a long old pier in fact i think isn't it the longest one in the uk one and a half miles, yes, it is. my missus has just told me one and a half miles it's the longest pier in the well longest pier in england possibly the uk um and we've done it and we have bought it as she says there. Um, and yes, Rossi ice creams. We've gone completely off topic here, haven't we? We was talking about transfer talk and managers and Southgate and Bowen. And we're now talking about South End and ice creams for reasons that I've got no idea. Uh, the only place worse they sent me was Wolverhampton. I've drove through it, Luke. I've never stayed in Wolverhampton. I've never been to Molyneux. I'm guessing I'm probably not missing very much. So, right. Okay, let's scroll through these. So do they still dump more sewage into the season near South End? Wouldn't surprise me, Trodge. Probably they do. Um, although they might not admit to it, but they probably do. 
Uh, Wolves, did you say? Yes, we did. We covered that a little bit earlier, Short Stack. Um, everyone's probably going to start calling you Short Stack now, Short Stack, because I'm calling you Short Stack, Short Stack. Um, we will get put Potter from Phoenix. <laughs> nice. Knowing, knowing us, Peter, very likely. Um, no charge, they live in houses now. Steady, steady. Um, Moyes leaves us when the Scotland job comes up, I reckon. Yeah, as I say, I hope he hasn't seen that article I had earlier where they said he was English. I couldn't believe that. Um, I enjoyed Canvey Island more. Yeah, Canvey Island. They got a nice pie and mash shop there. I think it's called the Crafty Cockney, if I remember correctly. Um, and that's just a mud hill. Uh, da, 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 da. we are we are a city. Yes, yes. I I thought I thought you were you were um Colchester. I'm just say I I retain certain bits of information and then I think is that right? Did I hear that right? And I start to doubt myself. But as I say, I I thought I remembered when we spoke. It was it, Colchester was your home. So yes, you are now a city. Get the bunting out. Um, Moyes will go to Celtic within the next two years. Possible, possible, because obviously he does. He's got a lot of connections with Celtic Football Club. Great, great institution north of the border. And the first British club to win the European Cup. Um, short stack saying she used to live on Canvey. Um, also went to preseason season Canvey Island. Um, Frank Lampard scored with a volley from a corner. Um, they've, they've got another team on Canvey Island, haven't they? You've got uh, Concord. Concord Rovers, that was it. Yeah, I remember. Um, Chelmsford is a city, that's right. As I say, it's three cities now in, in Essex. Uh, but you love Clandy Flask. Port Stanley, that was it. Yeah, in the Falklands Islands. Port Stanley, there was a few, wasn't there? As I say, Chelmsford, uh, Colchester, excuse me. Port Stanley, yes. Um, there was probably a few others, but yeah. Um, love the sweet stuff, she says. Thought you were sweet enough. You're chatting her up, Pete. There we go. I know what's going on here. Um, I bet you're an expert on <laughs> slot machines. Um, WHU58, hope you are well. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're just having a little chit-chat about various things and if there's anything you want to drop drop into the mix we'll get stuck into it please feel free we've covered bowen we've covered well we haven't covered zuma really but there's not really much to say he's he's in, he's in the dock he's banked a rise let's be honest about it you can't really defend the guy um it is what it is gate see the boy racer do you know what I've never really into that scene. Never really into that scene. I used to see all the lads going up and down the, back in the day, like I say, with the lowered suspensions, and I used to just think they looked like complete dickheads. Um, Margate is a dive. Right. When was the last time you went there? Because it may well have changed. It used to be, and I would have agreed with you probably five, ten years ago. But I'll tell you what. It's amazing the difference that's happened to Margate since they reopened Dreamland. And I think, haven't they got uh, some sort of art gallery or something down there? And I'll tell you what, it has made a difference to the area. I'm not saying that it's um, Beverly Hills. Uh, I'm not saying that at all. But Margate, if you... If your interpretation of Margate as a dive is based upon you going there 10, 15 years ago, it, it has changed um, for the better. Uh, a boat crashed through it? No. Don't know, mate. Uh, on his mobility scooter. So it isn't the longest no more, or was it rebuilt? You're talking about the pier. Um, no, it, it's... Tell you what. Tell you what. Let me have a look. I'm just going to Google it. Uh, as I say, I'm pretty sure that South End Pier... Yeah, it's, you know, it's the world's longest pleasure plea. At least that's what South End Pier website is advertising. Um, and who am I to argue? Uh, it says here that it's 1.33 miles. And, and as I say, they, they advertise themselves as the world's longest pier. So it's not just the, the longest pier in England or in the UK even. It is the longest pier in longest it's quotes unquote the world's longest pleasure pier hey I, i'm only telling you what it says so uh there you go uh listen to these words lings 
to top European team with Champions League and possible titles. No, he's 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 coming to West Ham, Darren. He's coming to West Ham. Uh, we need him. As I say, if we'd have had Lingard back into this season, he adds he adds goals, he adds assists, and like I say, we we probably finish sixth instead of Manchester United. So Manchester United, in retrospect, you can probably say that they probably did the right thing because we was two points away from each other. If Lingard, I know Lingard had no impact on Manchester United other than the goal he got against us at London Stadium this season. But, oh, I mean, that's that's well, that's well, three points right there that they got and we didn't, or an extra two points because it was a draw up to that point. So you could probably argue that that, that goal that Lingard got indirectly cost us European football, or not European football, but cost us Europa League football, cost us sixth place. Um, if you wanted to be really harsh about it. Um, but there you go. People have two heads in Wolverhampton. Ooh, ooh. Um, no, it's short stack. Short stack, not short attack. Short stack. Happy short stack. There you go. Uh, Leon C. Do you know what? I, I've never really stayed to Leon C. I've, I've drove through it, never Never really sort of like ventured around Leon C, if I'm being honest. Might have to do it. Um, used to print the Canby FC football kits. Did you? Lady of many talents. Um, Precious is another one. Old Lee is lovely. Pat, hope you are well. Pat, I'll tell you what, actually. You sent me a comment or you sent us a comment. And I'm trying to remember what it was about. And I was going to send you a response and then something happened and I didn't get round to it. What was it about? Do us a favor. DM me on um, on my, my Twitter account um, at Mr. Robert Gates, because as I say, there was something and, and, and I've, it's completely slipped my memory, but you, you put a comment on a video maybe a week ago. And I think there was something you wanted to tell me. Oh, that was it. I think it was about Frank Lampard Sr. And you were saying, did I know a certain story? And I'm like, I, I and I'll be honest, I don't. I don't. So um, if you want to sort of like put it in a private message, as I say, my Twitter handle is at Mr. Robert Gates. Send me a, a direct message on there, mate. Um, I always win things in Scotland, but not in England. Listen, I could probably win things in Scotland. Um, let's be completely honest about it. I mean, Neil Neil Lennon won multiple trophies for Celtic and, and came to England and did absolutely nothing. Um, the Maldives, very nice. Um, just going to rattle through this. As I say, if there's anything you want to get your teeth into, any subjects you want to talk about, if there's any stories that are out there that you want to have a chat about, get them in because... When my dinner's ready, I'm off ski, guys. I'm off ski. Um, so would you get rid of Moyes, Peter? I'm not saying he's saying get rid of him, but obviously nothing lasts forever. Um, love the Peter, Mo Peter Boat Pub. Oh, hello. Might have to give that a whirl. Uh, didn't say it doesn't mean things is what people want. Mm, success is a relative concept, though. Um, you know, for, for Bournemouth, success was... was Staying in the Premier League under Eddie Howe, wasn't it? Um, everybody has a different idea of success. I mean, yes, I would like to win a trophy. I can't lie. But if we finish six every year, that'd be fine. I'd be quite comfortable with sixth, seventh. Yeah, fine. I would replace him with Tro with Potter. Yes. Uh, about five years ago on my bike so run down and was full of unpleasant people oof sad what happens to english seaside towns um depends on where you go i mean i quite like broadstairs broadstairs is, is sort of out on the kent coast not far from margate and i quite like broadstairs um canvey island's quite nice lays down ish lays down's all right um just for driving through, but uh, Margate was our first school trip back in the day. Back in the day, only one place gets the title for the biggest dive on earth. You know where I'm talking about. Are you talking about a certain place in Germany that we frequented not so long ago? Is that 
the place you're talking about? <laughs> um, uh, Ram H8 Ram is my famous ho favorite holiday place to go when I was younger. South End had one of the best nightclubs in South Benfleet, is where we live. You're in South Benfleet. Ah, oh, you're, you're neighbors with my mother in law, then. Um, good luck. <laughs> Canby Island was my family weekend away day. Uh, small world. Uh, Mick says, Was Benny and Moy signing? Mm, well, he was in the sense that Moyes was the manager in the club, but do I think that he was a, a player that Moyes actively wanted? I have my doubts. I think that I think it's common knowledge that he wanted Ibere Eze, who went from QPR to Crystal Palace. And obviously, once he went to Palace, I think that it was probably a case of well, I'll I'll take Benny, but he's not my number one signing, but he's a signing. So is Walthamstow still the longest market? I've got no idea, Peter. No idea. Um, Margate with the Turner Art Gallery. That was it. And the lanes is a bit more up market. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that was what I was saying earlier, Short Stack. And uh, WHU58 just collaborated that they have put a bit more life into Margate. As I say, I think that the catalyst was the Turner Art Gallery and the um, Dreamland. What you used to be called Ben Bomb Brothers back in the day. That's that's me showing my age. But Dreamland, once they reopened that, that did seem to reinvigorate the basically the, the, the town. Um, hello, Cyber. Hope you are well. Uh, it was burnt down for an insurance job. What's that? What? What are we talking about there? Let me know, Pat. Um, I am middle class, so we went on holiday abroad. <laughs> Wales is abroad, no? I, I suppose to some people, maybe. Um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, pink toothbrush for me. The good old days. Oh, they're reminiscing. Look at this. Get a room, you two. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I buy an English shirt, shall I get a number and name? It's entirely up to you, my friend. I mean, what does Declan Rice wear for England? It's generally number four, isn't it? I think. Whatever you want, mate, it's up to you. Um, or don't. Or just put a number six on the back. That'll do. I think toothbrush in Rayleigh. Cavani top half was upside at Old Trafford. Let it go, Peter. It's done. Yeah, I mean, I'd, you could you could go back in a season and find points that you've dropped here and points that you should have got there. You drive yourself mad, absolutely stark raving mad. I know I've just done it for the the Jesse Lingard. If he didn't get that goal against us at London Stadium, they'd have had two points less. We'd have had uh, an extra point, whatever. So we'd have finished where? Um, yeah, so we'd have finished above them by a, a point, wouldn't we? So yeah, because they had two points. So yeah, if we'd have finished above them by a point. We'd have got six, but. Like I say, you drive yourself mad. Uh, you book for a camp uh, and might go to Margate for the weekend. Okay, like Margate. Hope Tarkovsky goes to the Magpies. I think he probably will. And I'm not really too. I mean, listen, if he comes in, great. I, I wish him all the all the luck in the world. Um, if he doesn't come in, I'm not going to cry over it too much. We we move on. Um, shortcake is very tasty. Great for dunking. I take it you've got some, Peter, as we speak. Or maybe you had it and now it's gone. Um, sure, Sheffield United topping TK Max today, 12 quid. I went to a customer today who was from Sheffield and she was a blade. And I just turned around and said, well, I won't mention Carlos Tevez then. <laughs> so she instantly knew what team I supported just from that comment. Aston Villa and Leicester sniffing around Tarkovsky too. As I say, Peter, if they want him, have him. Frank Lampard. Um not on Twitter. Have you got email? Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I have got an email address, but um, oh, I'll tell you what. If you have a look on the bottom there, Pat, on the ticker, there should be the email address there. Um, I think it is, isn't it? Uh, 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 I'll just wait for it to scroll back around. I thought that the email was there. Um, it's not, is it? Um, I'll tell you what. If you go, because I can't remember the bloody email address. It's not on that ticker, is it? It's got the Twitter. It's got the Facebook. It's got the Instagram. It's got the TikTok. Has it got the email address? No, it hasn't. 
shit <laughs> okay right pat if you go to if you put the email address down as forged from iron talk all one word so it's forged from iron talk at gmail.com yeah as i say whatever it was you were going to tell me um if you want to put it on an email let me know as i say this story about frank senior that you alluded to in the comment on one of the videos a week ago as i say i i was going to message you back and say whatever and something come up and then i completely forgot and as you popped up there i thought oh um plates rattling in the background i think my dinner's getting close um do you think we're likely to set let su check go um if we get a suitable offer uh i wouldn't be averse to it although i wouldn't like to see him i definitely wouldn't like to see him go to tottenham sorry i just wouldn't and if possible i would probably try and sell him abroad so if he wanted to go to i don't know let's just just pick a name out of eintracht frankfurt They've got Champions League football next season, so why not? I'm track Frankfurt. Uh, if I'm track Frankfurt, came in for Socek and and put an amount of money on the table that I thought was, or that obviously Moyes and Sullivan and all the rest of them thought was reasonable, and he went to I'm track Frankfurt to play Champions League football next season. Fine, no problem. As I say, that would be my preference. Send him abroad where he can't do us any damage. Lambastinia still drinks at the ship pub in Gidea Park does he now so that's where i i could sort of like sidle up to and sort of like give him a nudge and say hey frank can i have a word fancy coming on the channel <laughs> probably tell me to piss off um hello sharky hope you're well mate um i've given up on tarkovsky three weeks ago as i say i mean he didn't want to come to us before he, he didn't really settle in london or his missus didn't when he was at brentford so i'm not entirely sure um how much did we make this season in payments including europa league I saw something yesterday. I think it said that we, was it 228 million? That's the figure I've got in my head, rightly or wrongly, Walshy. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I saw something out there. And I don't know if that was just Premier League or that was Premier League, Europa League, FA Cup, League Cup, the whole nine yards. I, but I saw something that said 228 mil. Uh, SWP has announced he's not going to sign for us. As medical is taking too long, SWP, the only person I can think of with those initials is Sean Wright Phillips. And I'm fairly sure he's retired. Um, Stephen, hope you're well. Uh, love what Moyes has done. Respect. But Potter for me. Yeah, as I say, one day Moyes won't be there. And I listen, I, I think Moyes has done a, a stellar job. As I say, let's look at what he's done in the time he's been with us. He came into us the first time, saved us from relegation. He was waved on his way. He came back. He saved them from relegation again. Then in his first full season, we finished sixth and qualify for the Europa League. In his next season, we finished seventh in the Premier League. We get to the semi-finals of the Europa League and we, we get beat by the team that eventually wins it. And we qualify for European football again, this time the European Conference League. Now, listen, David Moyes, brilliant fantastic but one day he will not be West Ham manager and if he was sacked tomorrow and Graham Potter was put in the hot seat I'd be okay fine yeah we move on um did anyone order noble book I did from Waterstones haven't yet mate but I will get a copy of that at some point deal is very nice you are absolutely correct Walshy uh McAnderson the South Studio South End long time ago and then Mick's come back and says he met his missus in York Road South End She's not one of them. Um, can anyone tell me what happened to Darren Fletcher after West Brom? It's bugging me now. I've got no idea, short stack. No idea at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for anyone that didn't go to Frankfurt, and Charlie and I did, uh, Frankfurt was grim. Frankfurt was really grim. And I know that all cities have certain areas of deprivation and and there's people that are sleeping rough and especially nowadays with the way the world is i get it but there were people that were in broad daylight injecting themselves with what i don't think was insulin make of that what you will any news on frankfurt is getting punishment for awful behavior during their european campaign i haven't heard anything and i'm not really making any effort to try and see whether there is and but uh, 
it will probably be one of those things that's that's swept under the carpet, Peter. If it was in if it was us in the in uh, our, our fans doing that, you know that they'd have been talking about kicking us out of competitions and making us play games behind closed doors. But it is what it is. Um, the Germans they'll probably just sort of brush it off. So uh, as long as you haven't got bed pugs, yeah, fair enough. Done firmly. Ah, north of the border, we laddie. Um, she asked me to meet her there. Oh, my God. South Ampere. Oh, South Ampere was burnt for an insurance job. That's what you're saying. Well, did they... Is is the South Ampere that they've got now, is it basically the, the same structure just rebuilt, or did they build a new one? Because as I say, they've they've badged it up as the as the longest uh, as the longest pleasure pier in the world. So Peak District or Lake District, never been to either, my friend. Um, it's one of those places though. I would quite like to go. Big art scene in Margate, yeah. Turner Gallery is probably a a big uh, reason for that. I'm guessing Pat should have done the whole town by the sounds of things. Possibly so, will she? Uh, as long as the UK government issued a license for sale, Chelsea Gum have been approved today for takeover. Have they? Interesting development. Um, whatever. <laughs> Living Hertfordshire now really miss Essex. Only thing that missed Essex was the Luftwaffe. No, I'm only, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> that was that was a line from Fools and Horses. Um, that Del Boy said, and I, it just popped into my head there. As I say, Essex is there's some lovely places. So I, I'm jesting. Stay with me. Don't switch off because of that. Um, don't blame Lingard. Moyes brought Noble off the bench for the pen. Yeah, it's one of those, Pat. I mean, if he hadn't have brought Noble on and we hadn't have scored that penalty, everyone would have been turning around saying, you've got one of the best penalty takers in the business sitting on the bench. Why didn't you bring him on? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. The fact is he come off the bench. He had the penalty saved by De Gea. Listen, we can always pick holes in things. You know what I mean? Uh, the air is totally different to London. Cleaner, probably. Uh, happy can contact you for me. We'll do that. Uh, fair, fair enough, mate. Whatever, as I say, whatever way you want to do it. It's, it's, uh, uh, I'll give him the emails. Uh, I'll get you on Insta. Yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you do Insta, uh, press press like and describe. Or well, how about subscribe? That'll do. <laughs> uh, cheers, Pete. Do do appreciate it, mate. Uh, Rafinha's handed in a transfer request. Oh, has he? Right. Hold on. Hold on. Breaking news. Has he really? Right. Let's have a little look at this, shall we? Uh, oh, he has. According to this. Is he? Am I reading this right? Rafinha, hang on. Rafinha transfer gains momentum as player submits exit request and leads not rolling out Barcelona swap deal. A swap? Who for? Just trying to have a look here. I mean, I, to be honest, actually, fuck it. It doesn't involve us, so I don't really care. Whatever. Uh, Suchik can go for forty-five million to Spurs. No, because you know what would happen, Pete. He'll, he'll score. He'll score a hat trick against us. He'll 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 make us look silly. I, I no. Sell him abroad. Sell him abroad. Sell him to a, a German team or something like that. Um, really hate transfer. Oh, I will tell you what we could talk about. I will tell you what we could talk about. Um, if you want to, does, any, does anybody mind if we talk a little bit about this, the Europa Conference League? Now, we're obviously in it next season. Um, has anybody looked at the structure of it? I'll tell you what, it's really convoluted, isn't it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll share this with you because you, 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 some of you might have seen this. You might already know and you turn around and say, oh, no, I'm not really interested in this, mate. But have a uh, let's have a share screen hold on hold on hold on yeah i mean look at this so this is this is the wikipedia page which basically tells you all about hold on let me hide that current comment i do apologize guys um yeah i mean obviously next year the final is going to be in the sonobo stadium in prague which is i think 
that's the home stadium of it's either Sparta or Slavia. I think it's Slavia. Uh, let me just have a look. Um, pretty sure, yeah, it's Slavia Prague, the Sinobo Stadium. Um, now look at this. So we don't jump in until the first uh, the playoff round. They've got before we get involved. If you look here, you've got a first qualifying round, a second qualifying round, a third qualifying round, and we enter it in the playoff round. And if we win our playoff round, which is a home and away against whoever, then we then go into the group stage. Now, look here, the first qualifying round. Now, there's a lot of teams that probably don't mean an awful lot to an awful lot of people. Viking uh, from, where are they from? They are from the Faroe Islands. So not really a team that I'm terribly familiar with. But there are a few names there that I, I, I am familiar with. I mean, look there. Dynamo Minsk from Belarus. But didn't Belarus get, did Belarus get chucked out of international competitions? I thought they had, but because of all this stuff going on in Russia, obviously not. Um, Olympia Ljubljana, yeah, I've heard of them. Mura, they're the team that beat Spurs in in this very competition last season. Um, who else? Sligo Rovers, Derry City, um, Cliftonville, Crusaders, Larn. There was another one that I, there was another team that I found and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and I'm not too sure. I don't think it's in the first qualifying round that this team jump in. It might be the second. So let's just scroll up. Ah, now here in this second qualifying round, the names start, obviously they, they do, but the names start to become teams that you would have heard of. For example, Vittoria de Guamares, Antwerp. Motherwell, Istanbul, Bakshak Shahir, it's easy for you to say, Apoel, Aris Limas Limassol, Sparta Prague, Slavia Prague. Now, that'd be an interesting one. And Charlie and I, I think we had this conversation off camera. But if West Ham got drawn against, no, not Slavia, Sparta, excuse me, Sparta Prague, that'd be an interesting one because obviously... Their president is Daniel, is Daniel Kotinski, who is our second highest shareholder. So it be interesting to see how that plays out, should that come to pass, if we play them at any point in this competition. Um, Molda, Palk Salonika, Maccabi Tel Aviv, Basel, Basel. Ah, oh, that's the one, Oziek. Do you remember Oziek? Anybody remember us playing Oziek in the um, Intertoto? Was it the Intertoto Cup or the UEFA Cup? No, it was the UEFA Cup, wasn't it? Under Harry. Um, who else is there? CSKA Sofia. Um, Gabala. Now, Gabala, they're in Azerbaijan. Um, again, Charlie and I were talking about this. Um, it's a two-day drive to there. Um, but Gabala, I'm fairly sure that's the team that Tony Adams managed at one point or another. Um, who else have we got? Bate Borisov. They, um, they've competed in Champions League football. Um, St. Patrick's Athletic. That'd be a nice away day. Um, and then you've got some more teams that come in in the third qualifying round. Look at that. Dundee United, Twente, Anderlecht, Wolfsburger, Lugano, Zora Luhansk, um, Panathinaikos. Um, the good news is, as I say, there's some names there that I look at and go, oh, that could be tricky. Um, just to mark your card, as I say, we come in in the playoff round. The draw for that is on the 1st of August. The first leg is played on the 18th of August, with the second leg being played one week later on the 25th. And sh like I say, should we win the tie over the two legs, we then get into the group stage, the draw for which is on the 26th of August. So the day after the second leg of the playoff round is the draw for the group stage, which then commences on the 8th of September. The good news, ladies and gentlemen, is if you look here, if I scroll down, and some of you, like I say, might already be aware of this information, but for those of you that don't know. So here we go. Look here. We are one of the seeded teams in the playoff round, along with Villarreal, and the winner of the match involving Zora Luhansk 
with the seedings to be confirmed consisting of Fiorentina, Cologne, Nice, and the winner of the matches involving Anderlecht, Wolfsburger, Gil Vicente, and Twente, along with 22 winners of the third qualifying round and two losers of the UEFA Europa League main path third qualifying round. I hope that's giving you a bit more information than you had before. A lot of it is still fairly convoluted. And as I say, there's a lot of, you've got the first, second and third qualifying rounds, which right now we're not interested in because we're not involved until the playoff round. But I will be keeping an eye on that third. I'm probably going to keep an eye on it from the third qualifying round because obviously they're the teams that one of them is going to be our opponents in the playoff round. Um, as I say, there's a few teams in there that I look at and go, yeah, I've, I've heard of them and they've played, they've played uh, um, Charlie's, because you said yesterday, didn't you? I remember that you, you made the comment the second and I didn't, I didn't argue with you. I thought, listen, first, second, but as I say, Wiki says the, the second, uh, sorry, the, the first, I haven't looked on the UEFA website. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, let's have a look now. Let's have a look if I can find anything. UEFA. Uh, let's have a look. UEFA.com. Uh, Europa Conference League. Boom, 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 boom. Draws. Okay, let's have a look. Mm, uh, uh, no, I can't find... Can't find anything on the wafer website that that gives me any information on that, Charlie. As I say, that's what it says on Wiki. I mean, there are not everything on Wikipedia is a hundred percent accurate, but um, yeah, there we go. Uh, what have we got here? Tommy is live on AHTV. Oi, don't listen. Stay here. We're, we're having a nice little chat. I mean, you could you could have both of them on. You could listen to me and Tommy. Tommy's a good lad. I like Tommy. Um, we have got a chance. Um, who else? Da, 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 da. I'm just going to wind back a little bit. I've missed out. Rafinha. Da, 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 da. Uh, 1,200 teams in the Conference Cup. It does seem that way. And most of them are teams that you've probably never heard of. Uh, watch my Sam Clips, Saibi. You're right in the middle front. Is that right? Uh, isn't the Euro Conference Final tonight in Albania? I Is that tonight? I thought it was tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow, short stack. I think because um, it's Feyenoord against Roma, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, not simple at all. Just give me a nice Maltese holiday in the playoff round. Yeah. Was there a Maltese team in there, Charlie? I'm just having a look. Was there any Maltese? There must be. There must be a Maltese team in there somewhere. Let's go. Um, let's have a look. Give me a give me a Maltese team. I, I don't even know what the bloody Maltese flag looks like, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm trying to look because they've all got... Oh, hang on. Is that Maltese? No, that's Gibraltar. Mind you, that's just off of Spain, essentially, isn't it? Ah, there we go. Malta um, have got a team called Gazira United who come in at the first qualifying round. I don't know if there's any other Maltese teams in there, Charlie. Oh, yes, there is. Um, Floriana. They're another Maltese team. Oh, there you go. So we've got two, two, two Maltese teams in there, Charlie. So you could get your wish. But as I say, they're both in the first qualifying round. I don't know if any more Maltese teams drop in in the second qualifying round. Can't see any. So third qualifying round. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so I think you're basically relying upon those two, two teams that are in the first qualifying round getting all the way through to the playoff round. Charlie, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, no, they're not. No, they're not. Um, I think they got relegated. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I don't keep up to date with Romanian football. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, stop talking about the final too early. We need to get past the likes of Villarreal um, and into the playoffs first. Uh, we won't have to play Villarreal. We're seeded. We're kept apart, mate. So we ain't got to worry about that. Um, but as I say, there's other teams in there that I'm looking at and thinking, oh, mate, if we get drawn against them, it might not be very simple. So there you go. Uh, we have got a chance. We've always got a chance. 
you know, if, if we don't think we've got a chance, quite frankly, don't bother turning up. You might, you've done half the job for, for them if you're going with a negative mindset. Yeah, Dynamo Tbilisi, they are in there. They are in there. Um, I'm sure I saw their name. Dynamo Tbilisi. Let me just wind back. I'm sure I saw that Dynamo Tbilisi are in there. And, of course, people of a certain age will know that name because we played them in 1981. Um, where are they? Where is it they come in? Is it the third qualifying round? I've got a funny feeling it's somewhere around the second or third qualifying round that Dynamo Tbilisi do indeed drop in, ah, there it is. Yeah, they come in in the no, they come in, in the first qualifying round. Pat, yeah, um, the Georgian team, and yeah, that if if we played each other, that would be that would be a little bit of history repeating itself. And of course, we had a little bit of history repeating itself in the Europa League, didn't we? Eintracht Frankfurt. Oh, uh, Roma should win with uh, Father Abraham's on fire. One we should have got, but the special one was too much of a draw. Yeah, it is what it is, you know. Um, they obviously had a relationship. Basel's ground is closed as it is faulty. Is that right? Hmm. We won't get Villarreal in the playoffs, I believe. Peter will both be seen. Yep, yep, exactly so, Charlie. Yep, we're, we're not going to get Villarreal. Um, will Tappers and Shunters got through this year with Sheep Shearers United. Yeah, it's about right. Uh, Moyes needs to start wearing lipstick. He needs to be more attractive than Gerard. We won't get anyone high profile or maybe a wig or high heels and I don't know. So, yeah, go down the gym and work out a little bit. Uh, yes, very good news. Yes, we have covered it a little bit earlier, Sharky. That is excellent news. Um, just hope that he doesn't get his head turned or get some, yeah, other other unfortunate thing that we maybe regret latterly but yeah good on him we've been clamoring for a while that he should be in the england squad and and he is so uh yeah don't even go there pete that's put a very horrible image in my head to he would be good i uh, like i say I'd, I'd like to avoid avoid them because like i say we we thought when we got frankfurt oh 1976 and it's like yeah it didn't exactly go well um how long is moise's current contract a very good question mick of well you might ask i think is he up next season is he up basically his next season i got a funny feeling it might be the end of next season. Maybe. I could be wrong on that one, Mick. I'm, I'm, that's not the gospel. I'm not saying definitively. I'm just, I've, I've got something in my head that says that might be where it is. It's just it's alluring, steady, moist in lipstick. Um, imagine moist turning. Oh, Jesus Christ. Honestly, the, the, the conversation has dropped. I'm just going to have a little look. I'm just going to really quickly... Just go through some of these comments. Um, a lot of this is just a little bit of back and forth. Don't forget to like the stream, peoples. Yes, absolutely. Um, short stack. Yes. That's her name, people. Don't forget to call it. Good luck, Feyenoord. Oh, of course. Um, a Malteser. Uh, Andrew Fielding might have been asked before. Just got in. Welcome, welcome. Do English clubs get an extra place in Europe as the Miski Mouse's won both the domestic cups um well uh, yeah how can i explain it i guess um because the domestic cup the league cup you get into the conference league now so i understand the fa cup you get into the europa league so it basically it goes once that's taken care of. It then drops down to the the league, doesn't it? Unless, of course, the runners up in the FA. Because I think if you if the FA Cup, the runners up had have been a team that didn't qualify for Europe. Otherwise, they'd have got it. Because I remember that when Man City beat was it Stoke in two thousand and eleven. Because Man City had already qualified for the Champions League, because they, they didn't win the league in 2011, obviously. That was the year before the Aguero year. But Stoke got into the Europa League or the UEFA Cup, I think, as it was then, because they were runners-up. Listen, it's really convoluted. Um, Andy, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> Sometimes it's really difficult to try and work out who gets what. Um, never been to Malta, I've got to say. Um, but uh, hope you are well, Andy. Hope you are well. Um, and elect, yeah. Mind you, Josh Cullen had come back and bite us on the arse, wouldn't he? Um, Peter, Dynamo de Polisi, um gave us a real football lesson. Do you know, I talked to my dad about that and I said to him, is that true? And he went, yeah, yeah. He said, not very often I can remember in fact, I don't think he could remember another time where that happened. Um, a team, an opposition team, smashing West Ham and getting applauded off. But he said, no, they were that good. They were just like, how are you doing, Elliot? Hope you're well. Um, where do I get my Gazira scarf then? Um, they'll, they'll be selling 50-50 scarves outside the ground. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Um, never seen the point of them, really don't see the point of them. Um, where am I going? Bum, 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 bum. Just gonna, isn't Moise's contract a rollover? Possibly. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I thought it might be the end of the coming season, but it could be wrong. Did they film Popeye in Malta or was it Star Wars? No, I think I read something about this the other day. I'm fairly sure that Popeye was indeed filmed in Malta. Star Wars might have been as well, but I'm fairly sure Popeye was um, filmed in Malta. Um, didn't he see a sign of three years last season? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Um, didn't use, don't use olive oil. <laughs> It's upset. Behave yourself. Um, no, they got rid of that runners-up rule a few years ago. I think it was after Millwall got to the FA Cup final. No, I'm sure Stoke played, didn't they, in 2011? I'm sure they got into the... Um, I can't remember. Only winners of the FA Cup get Europa League now. Is that right? You you, you might be right, Charlie. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. You may well be right. Andy... Listen, it confuses the hell out of me. It's like, oh, well, if they win this and then, oh, it's a pain in the ass. Um, well, he's signed a three year contract. Uh, three years. Yeah, so he's right. He's right. Okay, I'm just going to have one real, very quick look and just make sure there's no other stories on the one football website. Yeah, it's just like a lot of this is what we've already covered. Um, Bowen's got his first England call up. We've covered that. Um, Kurt Zuma arrives for court case. Yeah, we've covered that. Um, West Ham could move on from 70k a week star. Oh, no, hang on. Let me click on this just in case. No, it's, it's about D D D Tarkovsky. Yeah, we've covered him. Uh, we've done the rice cl clause in the contract. Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything here, guys. That there's is of relevance to us unless anybody else wants to put anything in the chat that we that they want to get off their chest um then i'm probably going to turn around and say league cup winners going to the conference yes I, I did cover that one earlier pete yes indeed they do uh in june 2021 moy signed a new three-year contract west ham fair enough so he's with us till the summer of 2024 so he's got another two years then um well He's contracted for another two years. Contracts don't mean anything. You know, he could walk away or he could get sacked. Um, but obviously, if he gets sacked, he's got to get some sort of severance pay. Popeye was filmed in Malta and his, the set is now a themed holiday complex. Yes, I read something about that the other day, funnily enough. If my gran had wheels, she would have been a bike. I think is it Nick Ferrari says if my nan had wheels, she'd have been a bus. Same thing. Uh, a lot of Game of Thrones were filmed in Malta. Do you know what? I've never seen Game of Thrones, never seen a second of it. Um, it might be one of them things that I might be might get into, but I've never seen it, just never got round to it. Uh, I'll be gutted if Fabianski is here next season. I won't be gutted, but I think he should probably be the number two. Um, but yeah, just, everybody's got an opinion. I was given a lovely, unusual, noble tribute scarf at the City game. I gave it to this lovely old man in a wheelchair who really liked it and supported us all his life. He was so sweet. Okay, so I see. Uh, I've got I've, I've got to dress up as an old man to get any any sort of like little trinkets from you. Is that the trick? I'm only playing, um, Charlie. I might have the timings wrong, but it's defo not a thing anymore. If the winners, if the winner has Europa League or Champions League football through the league, 
in the place goes to the league. Not the runners-up now. Mind you, I mean, to be honest, most of the time, the runners-up is, is another team that's already qualified for European competition, isn't it? I mean, like I say, you look at this season and it was Liverpool against Chelsea in both the cop competitions, wasn't it? Um, I've got... Behave yourself, Pat. Behave yourself. Uh, Epic Fab's got to be back up for now, for sure, doesn't he? Yeah, I agree with that. I would. I don't want him out of the club, but I think that he, he probably needs to be back up. What to do, do with a scarf? Malted milk biscuits are so good. You dunk him in your tea, are you, Pete? Uh, okay. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. So I'm guessing there's nothing else you guys want to get off of your chest other than some small talk about malted milks and whatever. As I say, I think we've covered off pretty much everything that's out there at the minute to do with West Ham United. So I think I'm probably going to turn around and bid you all a fond farewell. I've had a good time. It, this, I'll tell you what, this has been going two hours and 21 minutes. And despite the fact it dropped out because of my internet, um, I've actually really enjoyed this. As I say, this was just, I was sitting here and I thought, oh, what shall I do? And I thought, ah, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just fire up and just see who joins us. And we've we've had a good laugh, I think, and uh, a nice little chit chat. It's, it's been good. Um, thanks for thanks for joining us, Walshy. As I say, do appreciate you uh, listening to me waffling on about just nonsense, really. Um but yeah, I'm going to end it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you could do us a very, very small favour, or a couple of small favours, actually, before you all clear off, um, could you please consider donating to the Iron Supporting Food Bank? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me just copy and paste that. If any of you guys are in a position to, to help this charity out, it would be really great. Um, even just a few quid. You know what I mean? Um, every little helps, as the advert says. It's in the live chat. You can you can jump onto that. Um, as I say, this is this is a charity that works in the Newham area, so the area where West Ham is based. And there's a lot of people that are struggling, and some more so than others. And this charity really does help families that are struggling, really low incomes. And yeah, please, um, if you've got a couple of quid, you can throw into the hat. As I say, I've put it in the live chat really would appreciate it. It, it, it just any any anything will do anything will do there's no donation too small um yeah it really would help um guys i am going to bugger off and as i always say before i finish the streams please don't forget to like comment on and share the stream to to your social media platforms subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't done so already and Make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts on content, new content uploaded to the channel. As always, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much indeed for your support. Peter, Peter, don't allow her to lead you astray. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm, call me anything as long as it's reasonably polite. I'll probably probably answer. Peter, I thank you very much um, for your, your compliment saying it's a good listen. Um, and short stack, thanks for joining me. I am going to leave it there and I'm just going to say to you, have yourself a good evening. Stay safe. Come on, you irons. <laughs>